Grace and peace, brothers and sisters. My name is Brother Karadazar, and tonight we have with us... Brother Beloved. Brother Beloved. Grace and peace, how's everybody doing? How was your week? We bid you grace and peace. Amen. Tonight, brothers and sisters, we're going to talk about love, sanctification, and being offended in Christ, and how mm. all these tie together. Because they are, they are emotional and spiritual growing pains. We got to talk about it. Okay, love. When the gospel is talking about love, it's calling us into the Father's love. That's why Hebrews chapter 12 says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of the majesty on high. That's what Hebrews chapter 12 begins. It begins telling you, seeing you some compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let's lay aside every weight because what is so important when you're called to the gospel, you're called to the comprehension of the Father's love. But Amen. being called to the Father's love, there's a lot of correction involved. There's a lot of correction involved. This is where people have trouble. That's why Hebrews chapter 12, it says, My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord. Because when you're called into the Father's love, this is where you're being corrected, and this is where people fail. This is where people walk away. This is where people are offended. But love sanctifies. The Father's love sanctifies you. Why? Because the condition that you're met in when the word meets you is a condition where you need to be cleansed. You're doing what's wrong. You're sinful. You're disobedient. So you're being called from an unclean state into being sanctified. Now you're called to be dedicated for divine use. John 17, 17 says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. John 8, verse 31 and 32, it says, If you continue in my word, mm -hmm. then are ye my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So it's a Amen. progressive growing into the truth. There's a progressive growing into the truth that you have to deal with, meaning it has to strip away, your re strip away all your false sense of reality. Because the truth is the reality of the Father's word. Mm. But I, I wanted to say this, saints. Grace and peace to all the saints that's on the line. What we need to look at is this. In being called into the truth, the law came by Moses, John chapter 1. The grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. The problem that the Israelites faced, that the world faced, is that they had their version of reality. Mm. That conflicted with divine reality. They had what they felt was right, but conflicted with divine right. That's what it, that's, that is what, it, that's what happened. And what we got to understand, when you're being called to the Father's love, the Lord Jesus is telling us about the commandments. Amen. How we should act, how we should behave, and how we should proceed as repentant believers, as born-again Israelites, or, or born-again Gentiles. You're born to the water, born to the Spirit. You've been received the adoption of Son. There's a, you have to deal with the sanctification. In a sanctification, you're being cleansed. Amen. You're being changed. You're being shown what is filthy. So let's go here. We got to talk about this here. We have to look at the Father's love. And as looking at the Father's love, then we'll understand what the will is towards us. So let's go to John 17. I hope you brothers and sisters had a beautiful week. I hope you brothers and sisters are inspired. Hope you understand that when God says sanctify them through thy truth, when the Lord Jesus Christ prayed that prayer, sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth, that man must deal with what? He has to be dedicated to divine use and the word sanctify. We discussed it also that it sanctifies to invest with sacred and elevated character. The elevated character is love, holy love, the father's right. love, his character. So for us to walk in love, we have to get to the agape. To deal with the agape, we have to understand the father's will. We have to understand the Father's plans. Mm -hmm. If understand, understanding the Father's will and the Father's plan, we're going to go into the book of Ezra where it tells you that the Lord loved Abraham and showed Abraham his will. So you need to understand the Father's will to walk in his love or you're going to contradict him or you're mm -hmm. going to gainsay. So when you go to John chapter 17, 
Okay, John chapter 17, and we can look at here, John 17, and we'll take it from, um, let's take it from verse 21, John 17, 21. That they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them. That they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and has loved them as thou hast loved me. So, brother and sister, when we look at this right here in John 17, when you look at it, and the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them. So, the glory of the gospel was given to the disciples. There was a glory given. There's a prestige. There's a dignity that's being given. Brothers and sisters, do not pick up the gospel and don't pick up the dignity. Do not pick up the gospel and miss out on the majesty. Do not pick up the gospel and miss out on the nobility. Do not pick up the gospel and miss out on the soberness. Miss out on the calm. Miss out on the prince of peace. You can't miss out on the temperance. You can't miss out on the gentleness. You can't miss out on the goodness. You can't miss out on all the essentials of the divine character. And the glory that thou, John chapter 17, verse 22, and it says carefully right here, the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them that they may be one, even as we are one. And then it goes on to say, I in them. We're going to read down to verse 26. And thou in me, I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect, mature, meaning perfect means mature in one. And that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them. As thou hast loved me. So you see where this is at now? It takes you into the agape. Look at the response. Where are, you, where are we in the response to the will? So when the gospel came into the world to correct man and show you that's not love. When you're in a room for a while. If you can become acclimated to an environment. And somebody knocks on your door and comes inside and says, listen, this place is full of gas. You got to get out. But you were in the room and you didn't even know. So why is it that you were in the room and you didn't know the place was full of gas? Because when you're in a situation for a while, you become acclimated, it dulls your senses. So if you were raised around people that, people that speak a lot of profanity, you don't understand about the destructiveness of profanity. If you raise around thieves, you don't understand how serious, how the graveness about being dishonest and a thief, how destructive it is to society. If you raise around people that are clamorous and speak loud and are yelling, you don't understand the destructiveness to how you raise in an environment where there's emotional abuse. If you raise around people that are conniving and dishonest, you don't understand how reptilian, reptilian and de devilishness that was, that listen, the secondhand feelings of devilishness. So when you raise around people that are malicious, do you really understand the destructiveness about being malicious? Mm. You raise around people that are self-centered where there's a golden child and a black sheep. Do you understand about a toxic family? So what happens in a family, that's why they tell you like canaries are used in certain places to detect what? Carbon monoxide, where even humans cannot detect it. So Christ coming into this world and showing us about love because man could not detect how far out of the love of the father that he was in. So he didn't really understand the graveness that you need to be cleansed. You need to be baptized. You needed to be washed. They didn't understand the graveness because they became too acclimated to the environment. They changed their standards. Mm. So God is telling you, if you raise around people that are rough, do you really understand about delicacy? That the roughness is abuse. And, and it, destroys your pre, it destroys your prefrontal cortex. It inhibits it. It injures your mind being around people that are abusive. So when Christ is speaking with gracious words, he's taking man into what? Into a whole nother reality. He's taking him to the kingdom of love. And in this love, we do it the Father's way. In this love, we believe the Father's way. In this love right here, the Father determines our reality. What he says is truth. Everything else is a lie. Everything else is a delusion. We follow the Father's way. John 17, 23, beloved, please. I in them and thou in me, mm -hmm. that they may be made perfect in one, mm -hmm. and that the world may know that thou hast sent me mm -hmm. and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Okay. Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. 
So the Father loved Christ before the foundation of the world. You being called into the foundation love, into the height of love, into the pureness, and there's a sanctification that is necessary. There's a realization that is necessary. There's a consciousness, there's a self-awareness that is necessary. So when we read last week um, on Friday in Leviticus chapter 20, about the Lord told him to sanctify themselves. He was showing them about what he hated, the destructive behaviors. But the people, when they came into the wilderness, they refused to put away the destructive behaviors. So how are you going to be clean? Can we go to 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1? And then um, John chapter 17, verse 17 to 19. To sanctify is to render or to acknowledge, to be venerable, to hallow. Under the word sanctify. God is setting you apart for divine use. If you're set apart for divine use, what is the Lord showing you? He's setting you apart for the spirit of divine, the Father's love. So you loving, you living and loving according to the Father's standard. Some people hear the gospel, but the scripture said they did not receive the love of the truth. And in some people, they are offended in the gospel. And the Lord Jesus said, blessed is a man that's not offended in me. And we're going to take you, we're going to take you right to the offense right away. Because we got to see where people are so offended. So after we're going to go to Matthew chapter 11, verse 6. Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth, because you got to be in the sanctification so you can stop being so offended. Amen. Matthew 11, verse 6. And we're going to read down to verse. Let's read down to verse 11. Matthew chapter right. 6. Matthew chapter, excuse me, Matthew chapter 11, verse 6 to verse 11. Okay, we're going to look at that right there. And then we're going to go look at something key in here about the sower sowing the seed. Mm -hmm. In Matthew chapter 13. Okay. We're going to go right. to Matthew chapter 13 and we're going to take it from, uh, let's see here, from 18. All right. From 18 down. Yeah. 13. Matthew chapter 13, verse 18 to verse 30. And I'm going to read this here. Let me see this right here. Matthew 13. And then we're going to read this one right here. Mm. 13 verse, and let's load this first. Matthew 13 verse 53. Let's load this one first. Matthew 13, 53 to verse 57, inspiring faith. Let's take a look at that. We're going to go to see the, the sower, the parable about the sower. And when the Lord is explaining about the sowing of the word, right? The word, the word is the gospel of the kingdom. And when you look at the parable the so, about the sower, you're going to see the people were offended. But Why? Why were they offended? Mm. Okay, let's take a let's take a walk. Let's take a All look right. at some of these verses. Hold on a second. Um, let me get my screen. Okay, so we want to do Matthew chapter 13, 57. Matthew chapter 13, 53 to 57 first. Okay, okay. inspiring faith. Well, we good. Amen. Um, thank you to all you brothers and grace and peace to all oh. you brothers and sisters that are here. Let's talk about love. Because you're coming into marriage, right? You got to do it the husband's way. That's what Christ said. He that loveth mother, father, sister, brother more than me is not worthy of me. You have to do it my way. You have to do the king's way. And we were trained to do it man's way. And the Lord shows you how he takes the skill. If you love mother or father, sister, brother more than me, because they were looking at what Jesus said and looking at what a man said, and they were comparing which one they should put, put, pay allegiance to and which uh. one they should be committed to. They waited on a skill. What should I be committed to? He said, if you love mother or father, sister, brother more than me, then you're not worthy. Then you don't value me. Then you don't value the gospel. Okay, let's take a look. Grace and peace. All take right. a look at this, right? Brother, let me take a look. Matthew chapter 13, verses 53 to 57. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these parables, he departed thence. And when he was coming to his own country, he taught them in their synagogue insomuch that they were astonished and said, Whence has this man this wisdom and these mighty works? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary and his brethren James and Joseph and Simon and Judas and his sisters? Are they not all with us? Whence then hath this man all these things? And they were offended in him. But Jesus said unto them, a prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and in his own house. 
brothers and sisters, when he had made an end of speaking the parables, let's take a look at this once again. And when he had made an end, Brother Blood, can you click it back? I, I got it. Yes, uh, I got it, Brother. Yeah. And when it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these parables, we're going to go to this. This is the parable about the sower sowing the seed. Look at what he's going to explain about the response to the gospel. He departed. And when he was coming to his own country, he taught them in their synagogues in so much as they were astonished and said, whence hath this man this wisdom and these mighty works? Then they're going to move on. And what they go, what's going to happen here, you're going to see is not this the carpenter's son is not his mother called Mary and his brethren James and Josie and Simon and Judas and his sisters are they not all with us whence then hath this man all these things um and we can we get Matthew chapter 13 verse 21 Matthew 13 21 and they were offended in him the word offended this okay. is the master speaking and they were offended this is the, the Savior speaking, and they were offended. This is the express will, pure love speaking, and the people were offended. The doctor is talking to the patients, mm. and the patients being told about their medical chart, their sickness, the direction, the treatment, the way they're going to be healed, they were offended. offended. The Redeemer is telling them about the depth of their problem and they were offended love is showing them the way the shepherd is speaking to the sheep and it says and they were offended to cause displeasure go ahead brother please offended cause displeasure anger resentment or wounded feelings and striking with disgust or revulsion it is to give displeasure or do anything calculated to cause dislike anger, stress, or worry by disobeying, violating, or transgressing laws, whether human or divine, causing pain, grief, or annoyance to a pattern of behavior or way of life. Do you see they heard the word and they were what? They were offended. We're going to read in John chapter 6, as Christ Jesus said to eat my flesh and drink my blood, right? And they were offended also. So the people that when they hear the word and they hear the correction, what happens? They become offended at the gospel, at offended at the standard, because we have to look at our flesh. The flesh is egotistical. It feels it's right when it's wrong and they don't want to receive correction. That's what the gospel Christ said. What did the Lord Jesus say? Except you humble yourself as a little child. You shall in no wise enter into the kingdom. I mean, you got to come into humbleness of mind. You have to let me, let the Lord teach you. Let the word be your standard. Let the word be your life. To cause, they were offended at Christ. Matthew 11, verse 16, to cause displeasure, they were angry with him. They were angry at truth. So there's a, there's, there's a corruptible nature in the flesh that becomes angry at truth. Mm hmm it becomes angry at the, the, direc the direction of love. It's they angry with reality. They angry with the reminder. They're angry with wholeness. Brother and sister, we got to check ourselves. When you hear the word, do you become angry? Because you forgot it. Or you didn't know it. Do we become angry? Because love sanctifies. But many people are offended in Christ. Because they're dealing with the emotional and spiritual growing pains. To cause displeasure, anger, resentment, wounded feelings in striking with disgust or revulsion. It is, it is to give displeasure or to do anything calculated to cause dislike. Or worry by disobeying, violating, transgressing laws, whether human or divine. So, let's take a look at that. They were offended. I want to get this also in John chapter 6. Brother Beloved, can you get the yes. um, Matthew 13, 31? 13, 21 is posted right here. Yep. Let's take a look at this. Yet, yet hath he not root in himself, but doeth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, by and by, he is offended. And so he's angry now in school, in the school of life. He's angry. He's resentful. The tribulation come because the word is correcting us in our life. That's why the Lord said, blessed is a man that endureth 
Blessed is a man that endureth chastise time. You have to endure the correction in your life. And do not be what? Don't become wounded in your feelings. They were so wounded in the feelings when Paul was speaking, preaching the gospel to the Corinthians. They said his speech was contemptible because they were wounded in their feelings. Mm. They wanted to throw the Lord Jesus Christ down off the hill because they were wounded in their feelings. They stoned Stephen with stones because they were wounded in their feelings. The love of the Father caused dislike. Why? Because they don't understand about the flesh. The carnal mind is enmity against God. It is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. That's what Romans chapter 8 tells us. For he that is in the flesh, if you're caught up in your feelings, you cannot please, you cannot serve, you cannot walk with God because the flesh is in a contradiction. That's what the Lord tells us, walk in the spirit. So brothers and sisters, when you look at my love, that sanctification, love is never sanctification. Let me get this one second, brother, beloved. Okay? All right. Give me one second. Let me get this for you one second, saints. Mm. Sanctification. Mm. Sanctification is not only a separation from what is sinful, but also a separation on and a reflection to the image of God. Sanctification is the progressive refashioning of our nature by the Holy Spirit into the image of Jesus Christ. So if you're dealing with sanctification, it's a, it's a progressive refashioning of our nature. It's a process. That's why 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1, having therefore these precious promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. So you got to cleanse yourself. Amen. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, he had to Paul had to tell the Corinthians that they were washed because he still saw fornication amongst them. He still saw reviling. He was showing you what is filthy behavior. That's what 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and chapter 6 was showing you. He was showing the people they were called to be Christian, called to be saints, but they still had filthy behavior because they did not understand the period, the part of sanctification. That when the Lord invests with you, invest in you, the elevated character, then we got to live it. Amen. When we show on the king's majesty, then we have to bow to it. Let the spirit help our infirmities, and we got to change. There must be a progressive refashioning of our character. The sanctification and the sanctified, the sanctification is what happens to the elect. The elect are sanctified by God and chosen by God before the foundation of the world. He, he that sanctifies and they that are sanctified, Hebrews chapter 2 verse 11, are all of one. So that which call, he's not ashamed to call them brethren. So in the sanctification, why are some people offended? And that's the question we have to talk about tonight. Why? Why? Because the word don't agree with us. I thought we serving. I thought we humble. I thought God is. I thought God is in charge. I thought we serving the Almighty. I thought we we the servants of the Master. And we here to do the Master's will, not our will, but the Master's will be done. Because the Master came as a servant to show us not His will, but the Father's will be done. So why are we offended in our service because we wrong? How many times have we been wrong? Hmm. But love is guiding us now. You have to let the scriptures stand in the glory of what it is. Sanctify them through thy truth. John 17, verse 17 to 19. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So the Lord wants us to understand that his word is the reality to correct, in, to correct humanity. The love of God is the reality to correct humanity. Amen. But they were offended. They were angry. They were resentful. They were in their feelings. They were in disgust. They mocked. They railed. They reviled instead of letting love guide them. When you read in Ezekiel chapter 16, brothers and sisters. Matter of fact, let me get it. The Lord said the time was a time of love. Ezekiel chapter 16. The Lord said he saw them in their blood. He washed them, showing you when you're called, when you're set apart for divine use, you're also being washed. And part of that washing, you have to be corrected. We have to be brought to brought into accordance with what is pleasing. And we're going to go to Hebrews. I'm going to pull this up on the screen, brother, brother beloved. Okay? Okay. On Ezekiel chapter 16. Mm-hmm. 
And um, matter of fact, let me get it for everybody. One moment. Uh, let me minimize this. Okay, be with me one minute. Love sanctifies. If you're a parent and you see your child been your child been out dirty, <laughs> your child been playing in the yard and playing with stuff you told them not to play. They played with other gods and they and they played sorcery and they played with witchcraft. What would you What do you do when you get your child back under your when you take your child home? You have to clean the child up. That's the thorough cleaning. Is it what? It's thorough. Okay. But you know, you know, you know, the problem is, see, they don't, they can't deal with the chastisement. Go, no, brother, finish, you, saying, finish saying what you're saying. Go ahead. They can't deal with the chastisement because you're going to snatch your child. You see him doing that. Mm -hmm. There's no questions asked. Get over here now. Let me get you cleaned up. But that's all done out of love. Mm-hmm. It's not done to, to hurt you or to bruise you or to maim you or to cripple you. It's, it's done to get you right. Go ahead. But if they're not rooted, like like we, we were reading it in the um in the early scripture, you know, if it they're not rooted, they're not rooted in the truth. They're not rooted in the love of God. So when things come, when trials and tribulations, th things of that nature, they come. And they're offended in the gospel. They're offended by Christ. They're offended by those, those loving and truthful words. Because this is it's all for our correction. It's all for our salvation. That's the whole point. But if you're not rooted, then you will be offended. Because the chastisement is coming. If, if God loves you, if Christ loves you, the chastisement comes. It's, it's, the, it's a part of, of the whole thing. It's a whole, it's a whole part of the salvation. How else are you going to be saved? How else are you going to come into the knowledge of the truth? Unless the Lord admonish you, man, and correct you in your errors. Okay. We're in Brother the flesh. Uh, We're you born in the flesh. Can you read yes. this and then, keep, and then you can keep going? I'm yes. going to read this and you can keep going. Um, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 6. And you have forgotten the exhortation. Hebrews chapter 12 and 5. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. When he tells you to stop, don't be offended. For whom the Lord loveth, he chastiseth. For whom the Lord loveth, he chastiseth, and scourgeth every son, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastisement, God dealeth with you, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chastiseth not? But if ye be without chastisement, we have all our partakers. Then are ye bastards and not sons. Father, furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reference. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? Brother, beloved, go ahead. Mm. Amen, brother. No, you were saying. You know what? Yeah, I'm, I'm, but look how eloquent. This is The word is saying it right here, picture perfect. This is it. You don't want to, you, you're offended by the gospel. You're offended by the Lord. You're offended by Jesus Christ, the Holy One of Israel, showing correction, giving guidance, admonishing you. You're offended by that, but your, your children in your house, you're not going for it. <laughs> I don't understand. What's, I don't understand that. Okay. How is that possible? You're not going to take disrespect. You're not going to have people talking to you a certain way. You're not going to go for it. But then the Lord is trying to save you from your flesh, from your wicked self. And you're offended by that. I, I, somebody, I make that make sense. I don't understand that. You can, you can give chastisement, but you can't take it. It's hypocritical. And God has control over all of creation. All of life. He can destroy the body and the soul. But you don't want to give him reverence? Nah. Okay. I don't understand it. But let's read this then. Since you're going right. here, right? Let me see if I can right. find right here. Let me see if I can get this. Okay, here's a sheet. Take a look at this. Take a look at this for a second. Um, because they offended. Right? Bear with me one second. Right. 
Here we go. Oh. Can you see that? Yes. Love corrects. Go ahead. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 9. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us to discipline a child with a view to reforming or improving. So, Brother Blubber, you said that in your house, the parents tell the children the house rules. That's right. And the children have to abide by them. They have to. And you sit down and you explain to the child what you're telling us for their good. Yes. And if the unbelief in the party, this is a part. It's a part. Look what it's saying you. Furthermore, we furthermore we've had fathers of our flesh which corrected us. The word correct means to discipline a child with a view to reforming and improving. Love disciplines mm. you. Love corrects. Love disciplines you. See, to, to discipline a child, you have to have a view of reforming and improving the child. That is not abuse. Mm. The discipline of a child with the view of reforming and what? And improving. improving. So when you read in Leviticus chapter 26 with the blessings and the curses, and the Lord said, if you will not be reformed by me, by these things, I will correct you. I will punish you seven times more. Why was he saying that? Because I put you in a situation and I'm going to enforce obedience because I want to reform you and to improve you. Mm. I want the changes to be made for your betterment. That's what chastisement is all about. So love corrects. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, be zealous therefore and repent, meaning reconsider because love disciplines a child with a view. See the view it, to make you to a certain standard of reforming and improving you. Improving. Love does not tell you you can keep doing what you're doing. I don't know. That's, right. that's what is the term in the earth. Say, who raised you? God told is Israel in the book of Ezekiel. He said, what was your mother a lioness? Meaning who raised you? Was you were you raised by a lioness? That you're so mean, that you're so cruel, that you're so vicious, that you have such animalistic instincts, that you have such fury, and you deal with such wildness. What was your mother a lioness? Meaning who raised you? Mm. Because the raising of the Father in Christ, everybody's raised to be like the Son of God. And that he died unto sin once, he that liveth must live unto Christ. So when, he, when we risen with Christ, meaning there's only one raising, there's only one way to grow up. In the view That's of reforming right. and improving. Brother Beloved, let's just read this down so they can wow. see this for themselves. Go ahead. Amen. That's beautiful. Wow. No, say what you're saying, Beloved, please. No, because it's, it's a view to reforming or improving, meaning it's not in vain. God already knows the end results if you accept the reformation and the improving. Mm -hmm. He already knows the end result. Mm -hmm. And it means that you're going to be clean. You're going to be sanctified. You're going to be washed. You're going to be justified. Because you took the correction. He's not just he's not doing it just to do it. He's not doing it to be abusive or hurtful. Mm -hmm. He's doing it because the Lord knows when you accept the reforming and the improving, he already knows the end result of where it's gonna lead you to. And they didn't get it. So then he sent Christ to show them the same thing. In the image. You're going to be in his image. If you accept the reforming and the improving, this is the image that you're going to be in. <laughs> Go ahead. And they still missed it. From the Latin correctus, mm -hmm. improved, amended, correct. Past participle of corrigere, congregare, to make straight, make right, make better, improve, correct. Brother Blum, he says something right there. Brother Richard, grace and peace. The scripture says, he, brother, the brother asked the question, what does 1 Corinthians 15.33 mean? 1 Corinthians 15.33 says, be not deceived, evil communication corrupteth good manners. Verse 34, awake to righteousness and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. What he was talking about, evil communication, because they were speaking in contradiction to the gospel. Mm. They were disputing the plain doctrine of the gospel about resurrection. So what it's showing you when you're dealing with false teaching, when your speech is in contradiction to the established gospel of Christ, you are corrupting people's manners. Like we discussed mm. it last week. Knowledge, right, gives you access to personality. If you ate with people who ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, what mankind came into, it produced Cain. But if you eat of the tree 
of life. What is that? Immo it, that's eternal life. That's love. So the Lord Jesus Christ is telling us, eat us, eat his flesh and drink his blood so that you can adopt, you can gain the divine nature, the fruits of the spirit. You can come into holiness. You can come into his personality. Because man fell from that. So what happened in 1 Corinthians 15, 33, he said evil communication, corruptive good matters because they were sharing false teaching and what the, the effect of false teaching, it eats like a canker. It ends up corrupting your manners because you end up getting the manners of the author of the false teaching, which is Satan. Mm. Many people are inspired and think that they got a revelation and they speak contrary to sound doctrine. And what the end result is, they end up being devilish. They end up being angry. They end up being railing. They end up with Satan's personality, but they thought they had a word of knowledge. So in 1 Corinthians 15, 33, to answer your question, brother, is the evil communication of corrupted good matters. He said, awake to righteousness and sin not for some had not the knowledge of some have not the knowledge of God. So how did they have the Bible? Mm -hmm. How did they have the Old Testament? How did they have the law and the prophets? How did they hear the teachings of the gospel, but they still didn't have the knowledge of God? Same reason we hear about it in Hosea 4 verse 1 and Hosea 4 verse 6, because the knowledge of God is an operating consciousness. They were not Amen. in the reality, so they were speaking against the resurrection. They were telling people how they feel about it, and the end result was the corrupting the matters, meaning what? They were spoiling the harvest they were spoiling the people they were perturbing their minds they were putting them into illusion corrupting Amen. the nobility taking people out of belief overthrowing the faith of some me mm. so that's why paul's at um timothy tell them charge them they teach no other doctrine because you teach another doctrine you're corrupting people's manners and if you check people that go into false doctrine you find them railing you find them insulting you find them highly opin opinionated. You find them operating in reviling. You find them doing this. Right. You find them speaking reproachfully. You find them despising the good because the knowledge is to take you out of the satanic knowledge, takes you out of the nobility of God. That's what it does. And it makes you what? Contradict the word. Why? Because the word offended you. Why did the word offend a lot of people? Because they thought they were the source. Mm. They thought they were the truth. What came the word of God out from you or did it come to you only? You're not the only one the word came to. And because you have to be corrected, everybody's being corrected. Peter was being corrected. And let me just say this for the let me just say this for the edification on the sake, right? When Christ rebuked Peter, see a lot of brothers coming up and sisters coming out of the camps. Hey, what people do? They learn this they learn this leaven from the elders. Mm -hmm. That Christ rebuked Peter. And then they keep moving with their insults. But see, that shows you don't have the knowledge of God either. What was Peter doing? You had, you're taking the Bible out of context because you want to use the word for your malicious intent. Christ did not speak to Peter in any malice. Remember, this is a shepherd. No, this not. is the savior. This is the mentor. This is the master. This is... Hold on. This is the redeemer, the ransomer. It would desire if I desire. He's going to die for Peter. So Christ never railed. So people use that scripture that the Lord told Peter, get thee hence Satan, because Christ saw who was speaking through. Whose words were being reflected by Peter. Those words were the words of Satan because Peter was trying to tell Christ not to be crucified, not to go and die. Because the loss, Christ dying was going to offend them. It was going to hurt their feelings. But they had to accept that hurt. They had to take that hurt. And not try to what? And not try to deter Christ from obeying the word of God. So Peter was rebuking Christ. And that's why Christ ended up rebuking Peter and said, get thee hence Satan. Come on. You know Amen. what? Let me do this. I don't want to word for it. You want that scripture? Okay. No, I'm going to drag this down. Okay. I'm going to drag this down. Because a lot of people use the Bible because they, they still have malice bred in them. They don't understand. This is all love. Peter was not speaking. Peter was not. When Peter was speaking, Peter was speaking in his own savior, in his own zeal. Peter's zeal was not according to knowledge. That's why he ended up trying to rebuke the Lord. And what happened here? This is right here. Matthew 16, verse 21. We went over it several times so people can stop misinterpreting the scripture. Love corrects you. Can we read this, please? Matthew 16, from, 21. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go into Jerusalem 
and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. But when you love somebody, you don't want to hear that. You don't want to hear that. The soldiers don't want to hear that the master going to die. The soldier, no, soldiers don't want to hear that his majesty is going to be what? He's going to be killed. They don't want to hear that. They didn't want to hear no, it. Why? No. Because the hearing of that hurt them. That's why. Hearing that truth hurt the disciples. It hurt them. So Peter moving from his hurt now. And, going to, and what did Peter go do? Go ahead, beloved. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord. This shall not be unto thee. He said, this is not going to happen to you. What's not going to happen to you? You are not going to be killed by these chief priests and scribes. Remember, Peter's the one that drew the sword and cut off the servant of the high priest's ear. Come on. Mm. You know, when, 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 when that's your main person, that's your bestie, that you put yourself in harm's way, ain't nobody going to do nothing to you. Ain't nobody going to do nothing to you. <laughs> Period. <laughs> Period. Ain't nobody going to do nothing to you, Lord. I'm going to deal with them. They're going to have to kill me first. <laughs> Come on, let's read. Go ahead. <laughs> but he turned and said unto Peter, Come on. Get thee behind me, Satan. Mm -hmm. Thou art an offense unto me. Thou savest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Because Peter's speech was reflecting the speech and the mannerism. Peter was speaking what Satan inspired him to say, and Peter didn't even know. Peter was speaking contrary to sound doctrine, and he didn't even know. Mm. It was an identification, not Christ calling Peter Satan. He identified who was speaking there. That's why the Lord said, try the spirit, by the spirit, whether it be of God. Those words that were Satan, so he was telling Peter, Peter, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something. Christ rebuked who? He said, get, did, did he, who did he rebuke? What does the scripture say? For many people who miss, people try to use the scripture because they have abusive speech. What does the scripture say? But he turned and said unto Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. Remember, he already told you Satan is eyes to have Peter to sift him like wheat. But he prayed for him. So Christ is going to rebuke Satan because Satan was impressioning him because Satan gives the suggestions. He thought he had a bright idea. He thought it was a good move. I got a strategy that's not going to happen to you, Lord. Thou savest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. And I'm going to read, read verse 24, please. Then Jesus said unto his disciples, mm -hmm. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Mm -hmm. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Peter, I don't need you as a vigilante, Peter. I don't need a vigilante. I need somebody that's obedient to the Father. I need to see you're going to lose your life in the obedience of the Father and Christ. We need soldiers of faith. We need soldiers that are sanctified. We need soldiers that are obedient. Because if you're going to, hold on, if you're going to save your life, you're going to lose it here. I mean, if you're going to use your plan and your strategy in order to win, this is how you lose. But if you will lose your life for my name's sake, if you will do what I tell you to do, that's how you win. That's how you succeed. That's how you conquer. That's how you triumph. That's how you're resurrected. That's how you gain the victory. Follow me, Peter, in obedience. So if any man will come after me, Peter, you got to deny yourself. That's what he was saying. This was not an insult. Mm. What did happen with Peter here? Peter was speaking outside of the knowledge of God. Amen. Okay. And what did love do? As many as I love, I rebuke. And what That's I right. chastened. He corrected him. Let's go back in now. So he corrected Peter. Don't try to save your life, Peter. I mean what? I'm over your life. Let's take care. Hebrews chapter 12, love. Let's read this down for the brothers and sisters to see that love corrects us. Take a look at this, please. Right. This is the problem in families. Many people leave families. Why? Be because they didn't like the discipline of their parents. Even though it was right, they wanted to be a wild child. And after the scars and the broken bones and the destruction and the people and the families that they destroyed, they come to their senses that I was wrong. That's what the Lord told Israel um, in um, Leviticus, after all that has come upon you, the blessings and the curses, what he said, you're going to come that you're going you're gonna to call them to mind among the nations. You're going to realize you were wrong. 
you're going to realize that I love you. Your flesh lied to you. Your mind lied to you. And the people you trusted lied to you. That you should have been upright. You should have been noble. You should have been disciplined. And you should not have been offended at me telling you the right thing. You shouldn't have been offended. Inspiring faith, can we deal with the grown? After this, we're going to post growing pains when beloved finished reading this. Beloved, love corrects. Right. Does love correct? Love corrects. Let's read Absolutely. It. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 9. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, mm -hmm. which is to discipline a child with a view to reforming or improving. Mm -hmm. From the Latin correctus, improved, amended, correct. Mm -hmm. The past participle of core gear or comber gear to make straight, make right, make better. So what is the improve. whole point when God called Israel out of Egypt, when God is calling people to the gospel, what is he telling the people whom the Lord loveth, he corrective, he's improving you, he's making you straight. Amen. Let's read. Improve and correct. What else, beloved? To point out usually for amendment the errors or faults of. This is where it hurts. This is where it begins to hurt. You always set... telling me what I'm doing wrong. But to be corrected is to point out, to point out, usually for amendment, the errors and the faults of. Let's read. To set or make true, accurate or right, mm -hmm. remove the errors or faults from, mm -hmm. as in the new glass is corrected as eyesight. Okay. To so point well, out. Yeah, beloved, wait one second, beloved. Yes. Beloved, yes. you ever got, you know, I don't know those, those of you that have gla wear glasses. And then you, you know, your parents take you, take you, you know, to, or you become an adult, you go to the eye place. I need to, let me check my eyes. And when they show you, they give you the chart till you read the chart. Mm -hmm. And you read the chart, can you read this? You say, no, okay, next line. How about this line? How about that line? How about this line? How about that line? You can read that line. Then when they show you what corrective lenses, what correct eyesight should be, you are shocked at your lack of vision. You thought you could really see. You thought things were clear until you get them brand new glasses. Jesus said, I'm come a light into this world that they would see not might see and they would see might be made blind because he's given you the spiritual eyeglasses. It's humbling. You humbling thought you could experience. see, but you couldn't see. It's a humbling experience. Wow. How you offended somebody help you see? <laughs> <laughs> somebody help you see clear, man, and you offended? Oh, Jerusalem that kills the prophets, beloved. Mm. They killed the prophets because the prophets came to help them see the word prophet. He that was now called the prophet, inspiring faith from post the scripture, was a four time right. called a seer. The prophets came to help the people see what they needed to correct, and Israel killed the prophets, and the nations killed killed the prophets, why, and hated Israel because they did not want to see. So if you're an Israelite, let me say this to these brothers and sisters Israelite. If you're an Israelite, that's your problem. That's a genetic defect that you're going to have to overcome. Hating to see when you're wrong. Right. No, when the Holy Spirit tell you. Because by the time somebody tells you you're wrong, the Holy Spirit came to you a few times and told you you were wrong and you resisted the Holy Spirit. And then God going to send the Holy Spirit that's in a person to tell you something that you already heard already. But you were resisting. Absolutely true. So when they killed Stephen, when Stephen said you do always resist the Holy Ghost, what did they do? They killed Stephen because they were trying to extinguish the Holy Spirit. Don't speak to me. I don't want to hear nothing. Mm. But brothers and sisters, when you're being corrected, man, because you have a future that's greater than your present. When you're being corrected because there's a, there's, there's, there's a life greater than what? The present reality. Um, when you're being corrected, meaning there's blessings available to you, but you can't access them by the way you're acting. That's why you're being corrected. Remember, correction is the discipline of a child in view of reforming and improving. So, but here's the problem, because you were raised by oppressors, but why you want to complain about that? Because you are oppressing one another. Ah, huh. uh, didn't Jeremiah spend time in a dungeon? Wasn't Isaiah and the prophets hated? Didn't they yeah. want to assassinate Moses?
Anybody yeah. who tried to correct Israel, anybody who tried to correct the chosen, anybody who tried to correct the cause, anybody who tried to correct the peculiar people, they were what? They were victims of what? Of slander. They were victims of hatred. They were plots against their life. Why? Because the people hated correction. They were so crooked, right, that they didn't want to be straight. If you love me, let me do what I want. If you love me, just give me what I want. If you love me, just keep agreeing with me. If you love me, just say amen. If you love me, just support me. No, 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 no. God, a father does not aid in the destruction of their child. Not at all. A father does not aid in the destruction of the child. A father not giving you a line. Hmm. Let's read. The First point. of all, we've had well, blah, 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 blah. take it from the top, and I'm, I'm brother, brother. I'm a quiet down. This is so exciting, and let's read the whole thing. Let the system, <laughs> let the saints look at this. Take it, us. Amen. For Hebrews chapter twelve, verse nine. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, which means to dis discipline a child with a view to reforming or improving. Mm -mm. From the Latin correctus. Oh, but beloved, which I, means, I, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So that means it has to be tempered. The child can't feel like you're abusing them. They still right. got to see the love. That's why God's word, all his correction was with explanation. He kept explaining to us what he was doing so that we didn't get the right. wrong feeling about it. Amen. <laughs> Go ahead. From Latin correctus, which means improved, amended, or corrected. Mm -hmm. It's the past participle of corrigir, congregir, to make straight, make right, make better improve and correct mm -hmm. to point out usually for amendment the errors or faults of to set or make true accurate or right remove the errors or faults from as in the new glasses corrected his eyesight mm -hmm. to point out or mark the errors in correct implies taking action to remove errors faults deviations defects to alter or adjust so as to bring to some standard or required condition to make or set right, to deal with or take care of a problem, bad situation, etc. Successfully to change something so that it is right, true, proper, in accordance with an acknowledged or accepted standard, mm -hmm. to rectify. Okay. Also means to punish in order to gain control or enforce obedience. As in Leviticus 26, verse 18, if you are not yet for all this, hearken unto me, then I will punish you seven times more for your sins. So when God said he was going to punish them in Leviticus 26, 18 for their sins, the punish was to gain control over them and to enforce mm. obedience. Punishment was not for them to be abused. Just to, I want you to take my yoke. I want yes. you to enforce the obedience that you will be loving, upright, holy people. It's always in view of what? Reforming you and approving and improving you for you to be partakers of holiness. That's what the correction was about. Let's keep reading. <laughs> Amen. A primitive root. Which that's H3256. A primitive root to chastise literally with blows or figuratively with words. Hence, to instruct, to bind, to chasten, to chastise, to correct, to instruct, to punish, to reform, to reprove, soar, to teach. Rectify implies a more essential changing to make something right, just, or properly controlled or directed. Remedy implies removing or making harmless a cause of trouble, harm, or evil. Reform to improve someone or something by removing or correcting faults, problems, to improve your own behavior or habits, to put an end to an evil by enforcing or introducing a better method or course of action to induce or cause to abandon evil ways. Amendment of what is defective, vicious, corrupt, or depraved. Depraved, which means very evil. Having or showing an evil and immoral character. Revised suggesting a careful examination of something and the making of necessary changes. Agreeing with facts conforming to an approved or conventional standard. Correct behavior. Correct means conforming to or agreeing with fact, logic, or known truth conforming to a set. 
is that set fee? Oh yeah, right. um, yeah uh, um, um, conforming to or agreeing with a fact, logic, or known truth. Okay, let's just skip that right there, beloved. Um, okay, conforming to the fact standard of truth. Go ahead. Correct usually implies freedom from fault or errors. Okay. Accurate implies fidelity to fact or truth attained by exercise of care. Mm -hmm. Exact stresses a very strict agreement with a fact standard of truth. Okay. Revelation chapter 3, verse 19. Mm -hmm. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Okay, so we looked at H3256, right? Let's take a look at this for right. a second. Let me pull this down. Take a look. So he's telling them in Hebrews 12, let me put it here, but I want you to see this. Because this is where people are offended at. This is where the offense comes in. This is where they're, they're irritated. This is where they become annoyed. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you. I learned to children, Hebrews 12 and 5. My son, despise not thou, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor think when thou art rebuked of him. So when you see the word rebuke, what is it showing us right here? It says what? He's admonishing you. For whom the Lord loveth, he chastiseth, and scourgeth every son whom he received, receiveth. Mm -hmm. If you endure chastisement, God dealeth you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chastiseth not? For if we, but if he be without chastisement, we have all our partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. And then they show you further. We've had fathers our flesh which corrected us and we gave them reverence. Now let's go over here for one second. Let me go. My screen is too big. Come this way. Here we go. Because love corrects things. And this is the problem that people have had with the word. They refuse the correction. This is what the problem is. Revelation 3, verse 19. Read that, beloved, please. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Okay, be zealous, therefore, and repent. Okay, so let me put the screen back here. Let me can grab this. Can I get it? Nope, can't get it. Let me see if I can pull this back up. Yes. When you see this word right here, H3256, it said means to what? To chastise with blows figuratively. Why? In order to enforce the gain control over us. So our chastisement, our corrections in life was for the Lord to gain control for us to be a more loving people. Amen. To, for us to abandon our evil ways, to introduce to us a better method and course of action. So when things went the way, things went wrong in life, you got to say, I can't keep doing the same thing over and over. I have to change because for me to get a better result, I'm going to have to change. So love points out your immoral character and shows you you have to put an end to certain things and it gives you a better method and course of action it also revises you what does it do by careful examination of something to make the necessary what it all is about change mm. to bring us to what conform to the fact for us to do what is right how do you do what's right because the lord has to correct what and point out our faults and our errors and then we have to be accurate we have to be in the fidelity to the facts and the truth so the whole point of the Lord showing you the gospel was to correct us. Let me come out of the screen. Give me Amen. one second. We've had fathers of our flesh that corrected us. Oh, you know what? One second, beloved. All right. So we're going to get to the part with sanctify. Okay, let me clear this off. Okay, beloved, take a look at this right here. The whole point of the chastisement, take a look at this right here, saints. Hebrews 12, verse 9. 9 to verse... He was 12, verse 9 to verse 11. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh, which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Mm -hmm. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and live? Mm -hmm. For they verily for a few days chasten us after their own pleasure. But he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. So the whole point of the chastisement is for us to be exercised, to come to the peaceable fruit. The correcting is to bring you to what? The fruit. 
the fruit of righteousness, the fruit of holiness. That's why it's telling you, verse 10 tell you, but they verily for a few days chastened us. They corrected us. They pointed out our faults. They pointed out our errors in order for us to what? For, our, for us to be a success. Mm. So they know bad actions create failure. So what yeah. is showing you, but he for our profit, that we might be partakers, what? Of, there's a different success when you're dealing with godliness, when you are dealing with holiness. It's a different success. Amen. Okay, so I wanted to read this. Um, Let me clear this screen. Escape. Let me come back this way. Here we go. The wait till it register. Okay, take a look at the saints. Mm. Growing pains, emotional difficulties experienced during adolescence and pre adulthood. But growing pains are also attributed to difficulties attending any new experience or any rapid development of an existing extensive task undertaken by a person, group, or people. The experience of growing pains or temporary difficulties and problems at the beginning of any particular stage of life development. So, brother and sister, why did the scripture wow. say, lift up your hands which hang down? Why does it say, lift up your, wherefore, lift up your hands? Let me show it on the screen again. Because it's a growing pain. That's why it says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 11. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 12. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet. Lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. How does somebody be turned out of the way? They leave what the scripture says and goes into their imagination. They leave what the scripture says and deal with their feelings. They leave what the scripture says and end up with itching ears. They leave what the scripture says and deal with what? How they feel their God becomes their belly. And many people say they speak in by the spirit and the history of the transgression in the Bible was men mm. saying they were moving by the spirit and they were not. Mm. They were following their own spirit, not the Holy Spirit. They were following yeah. their own spirit, not the Holy Spirit. That's what the New Testament shows you about the Holy Spirit. Amen. And it has, a, it has a strict character in it. The Holy Spirit has firm mandates. It, there's steps to somebody walking in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Growing pains are emotional difficulties. That's why the Lord said, make straight paths for your feet. Let not that, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Look what he's showing you. Follow mm -hmm. peace with all men and holiness. It don't tell you to be a deceitful. It says, look at the conduct. If you want to pass, if you want to be promoted, if you want to get to the next grade, if you want to graduate, you have to follow peace with all men and you have to deal with the holiness. Amen. Without which no man shall see the Lord. You want to see a body who dropped out? Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. Lest any root of bitterness spring up, springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Lest there be a fornicator, lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessings, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. Now here's the danger in this scripture. Here's the danger in this scripture. Ask yourselves this, and you can, I, I, can y'all post, I want to see y'all answer this. Why is Esau being mentioned in a conversation to the Hebrews? Mm. Why is Esau being mentioned in a conversation about looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith, in, in a conversation about blesses a man that endureth chastisement, blesses the man whom the Lord correcteth, why is Esau being mentioned? Post your comment. Because how did he? Why are you? Why does the Lord bring? Why is the Lord bringing up Esau? Okay, okay. Esau was the son of Isaac. Okay. Yep. Okay. He knew Abraham. Okay. He knew the Holy House. Okay. But why is he being mentioned? Why is he being pointed out? So let's look at it then. The Lord is telling us, lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright because he stepped out of the chastisement. He refused to be corrected. 
That's why he's being pointed out here. Mm-hmm. He don't he didn't, he didn't want to do what's right, although he was knew it was right. He went on, he dropped out of the spiritual school. So you don't follow amen. So that you, so that you do not follow his ways. His ways mean you you're raised in the house. You hold on. You know right from wrong, and you chose to do wrong, although you knew what's right. That's why it's pointing it out. How did he give away his birthright? Because he didn't want to deal with the discipline of having the birthright. That's right. He didn't want to deal with the strictness of having the birthright, so he got rid of it. Mm. Let me get out of this birthright, man. This is too much for me. All these regulations and these, and I can't do this, and I, I can't do that, and, and I shouldn't do this, and I shouldn't do that. Because they think that they don't need amen. Because they think that they don't need correction. Esau has to be corrected also, amen. The firstborn is holy to be untampered with and has no right to trash his birthright. And Esau knew that. Okay, exactly. Okay, so Esau know he he's supposed to be holy. He's supposed to be representing the image of his father. And he threw right. away his birthright, right? Because he did not want to live the life that Isaac lived. He didn't want to be upright. He didn't want to be noble. So he's warning, he's warning the Hebrews. Because remember, whose house are they in? They, we in Christ's house. Christ That's as right. a son over his own house. Brother, amen. No Cain attributes. The K, there it is, right there it is. Amen. All right, the saints is in the house. All right, the <laughs> saints up in here, the children of light. Brother, let me get some shade. They, they shine the light so bright. Let me get some shades, okay? Amen. Until, until my pupils <laughs> dilate, they shine in the light. That's right. Because the Lord wants us to understand, right? So we don't make the mistakes. Hebrews chapter 3, right? Right. Let's look at verse 3, verse 6. But Christ as a son over his own house, mm -hmm. whose house are we, if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. We got to hold fast. Christ as a son of his own house, whose house are we, if we hold, if we hold what? If we hold fast the confidence of the rejoicing of the hope, which is the gospel, firm unto the end. Let's read, brother beloved. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, today, if you will hear his voice. Harden not your hearts. I'm as tired of listening. I'm tired of listening. I'm tired of listening. Mm. All them scriptures, all them verses, all this talking. I'm tired. Just take me to the promised land already. I'm tired of all this listening. And we in the wilderness with all this dirt and, and all this sand. And this is all hot out here. And and I could. I'm missing the onion. I'm missing the leek. You know, I'm tired of all this, man. If you mm. if you're gonna give it to me, just give it to me already. It's better that we died in Egypt. Disrespectful. Meaning Egypt's judgment was better than this. And God said, up, oh, be it unto you. They opened their mouth. They said that. And that was their reality. That's why in this life, brothers and sisters, we should learn. Do not open your mouth. When the Lord called you to the gospel, do not open your mouth and speak in reviling to you being corrected. Because we lived a life where we were dead wrong. Mm. And people were hurt by our ungodly ways. People were hurt by our selfish ways. People were hurt by our lack of understanding and by our ignorance. So the Lord is calling us to do what's right. And listen, you can drop out the class. You could break the yoke and burst the bonds. The sheep can go astray, they can. But know the wolves are waiting for you. That's right. Catch the attitude. Be disobedient. Remember happened, what happened to Cain. That's right. Because look, the Lord God, the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ corrected Cain, and Cain refused the correction of the Lord. The scribes, the Pharisees, the children of Israel, they were pure in their own eyes. They rejected the correction of the Lord. And what happened to them? Mm. They came to desolation. The physician exactly. calling you to treat you. If the physician calling you to treat you, it's our duty to take the medicine. Because guess what? You're already dying. That's right. Let's stop it, man. We're already dying. Ignoring the physician doesn't make the sickness go away. So, brother, beloved, when the Lord said, if the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. When the God called you to the gospel, you were already dying. So if you keep hearing the word, you're going to continue to live. But if you stop hearing the word, then you chose to die. Mm. So we're on life support. You're on life support. The quickened are on life support. Yes, the okay. quickened are on life support. 
Amen. So if you want to pull the IVs out ah, boy. and flip the, the hospital bed over <laughs> and while you're walking out, slit the, listen, slit the nurse's throat mm. and, and slit the orderly's throat and kick down a security guard, that's up to you. Because they will only send for your help. That's right. Israel, I'm going to send you prophets and wise men and teachers, and some of them you're going to slay because you don't listen. What? Because you're not examining the danger that you're in. Mm. If the nations of the world would have sort of paid attention to the severity that came upon Israel, they would have never had gotten this far. They would have never committed the transgression they committed if they saw what happened to Israel because um, the satanic world is real. You throw away, you throw away the gospel of Christ. You're not a reality. The demons will give you an altered state of mind. Period. They're doing it. You're seeing it every day. You see what happened to these men in camps. You see what happened to men in churches. They, Satan will give you an altered reality and make you feel good about a lie. He'll do it to you. Mm. So, we, are we going to deal with the growing pain? All right, let's go back again. You don't have to deal with this. Okay, you don't have to deal with it. Okay. Um, they defected to the Grecian side. Um, when the Greeks came up, they said they didn't have to deal with it. They preferred the life of the Greeks more. And what happened? More calamities came upon Israel. Emotional difficulties experienced during adolescence and pre-adulthood. But growing pains are also attributed to difficulties attending any new experience or any rapid development of an ex existing extensive task. Brothers and sisters, the high calling is an extensive task. Amen. Let me close some of these windows here. Um, see a little delay. It is an extensive task by a person and a group of people. Let me close some of these windows. And what, beloved, click the next one. The experience of growing pains are temporarily up. Are temporary, temporary difficulties and problems where they are. They at the beginning. So I'm gonna say this to brothers and sisters. Don't murmur. Because what did, what did they do? Murmuring was one of the problems they had when they came out of Egypt. That's why I don't murmur. We should learn. Don't murmur Amen. against the word. Learn what the word says. And let the Lord help our infirmities. Meaning what? Don't murmur during the sanctification. Mm. That's what he's showing us. Don't murmur during your sanctification. Okay? That's right. Let me close over these windows. Bear with me one second. Okay, inspiring faith, can we get this right here? Proverbs chapter 30, verse 11 to 14. Hmm. Proverbs 30, verse 11 to 14. Um, John chapter 6, verse 57 to 61. No, we're not, we're not going to get our own way. We got our own way already. Look where we ended up by, by doing things our own way. Jeremiah 37, verse 18. That's Proverbs 30, verse 11. John 6, verse 57 to 61. Uh, Jeremiah 37, verse 18. And then we're going to Matthew 15, verse 10 to 14. And Matthew 15, verse 8 and 9. And then Mark 6, verse 1 to 3. John 16, verse 1. Bear with me one second. Let's take a look. So we can look at ourselves. Um, then we're going to get, um, let me see here. Matthew 26, verse 33 to 35. Excuse me, excuse me, saints. Matthew 26, verse 29 to 32. Matthew 26, 29 to 32. And then Matthew 26, 33 to 35. Okay? Matthew 26, verse 29 to 32. And then Matthew 26, verse 33 to 35. Okay. We got those. Mm hmm. All right, let's talk. 
Let's take a look here. So there's growing pains because it's new. My sister said, what did my sister say? Um, life support, good choice of words. Amen. Beloved, brother, beloved, you said life support. Amen. Beloved, go ahead. You said they're on life support. Yeah. Go ahead. Because without the Father in Christ, man, we, we dead in the sins and trespasses. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, Christ came to quicken us. So without that support, we have no life. Mm -hmm. We're dead outside of him. We were resurrected, redeemed, brought back into the fold. So without him, man, we flatline. And if you don't believe it, look at those that don't have the Father in Christ in their life. Look at the world. Everybody walking around dead, man, like zombies. It's like the walking dead out here, outside of the Father in Christ. Meaning, where's the care? Where's the love? Where's, where's the, the kindness? Nurturing? Amen. Where's the nurturing? Where's the concern? Where's the delicacy? Where's the gentleness? Why are they so savage? Let's lay a few of these verses right here, right? Um, right. Matter of fact, let me lay this verse right here. Let's do this, okay? Brother Beloved, let's take a look here. Let me hit the screen. Yeah. Um, let's take a look. Um, let's, we're going to run a few down real quick. Um, yep. um, First Peter chapter 1, verse 1. First Peter chapter 1, verse one and two, can we take a look at this right? Because we mentioned the word sanctification. We want yes. the saints to see it. Um, if you're see, if you're see, but, but but that's the beginning part. My sister said, if you're if you're comfortable, then you're not growing exactly because you gotta because your flesh is going to resist your growth. It's Absolutely. like you're building muscle, right? You gotta put you gotta push that muscle <laughs> to build that muscle. <laughs> Listen, growing pain. <laughs> it's called growing pains. You have to exert as effort against that muscle to build that muscle. Okay, so we got to confront our errors in order to overcome the errors. Okay, let's take a look at this. First Peter chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. Amen. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, elect, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, Unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. So there's a progressive remaking, brother beloved. There's a progressive remaking of our personality and our mind. There is a sanctification of the spirit. That's what we're dealing with in the gospel. Let's take a Amen. look here. Let's go to Second Thessalonians chapter um, 2. Let's read from verse... Mm, let's start from verse 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. Mm -hmm. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that all might be damned, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Brother, load that one more time, please. Mm. For this cause. And and for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. What blocked people from believing the truth was their enjoyment, the dopamine hits they were getting in the unrighteousness. Mm. That's what blocked them. They didn't want to receive the correction because they were enjoying the vile affection. They didn't receive the correction because they were enjoying the vile affection. One more time, they refused the correction because they were enjoying the vile affection. They didn't care who it hurt, who it devastated, and for this cause, God shall send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But we're not over there. Let's read on. Mm. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. Whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our father, 
which have loved us and have given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good work, word and work. Do you see that, saints? We are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved huh. of the Lord. I mean, you are object of love and object of favor. How do you know that? Because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth, whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. We began the class in John 17 where the Lord Jesus said, the glory that thou hast given me, I have given them. The reality that Christ gave was given to the Father what the Father's given from the Father. The reality that Christ was given to show the people of what the Father's doing in his plan. What's Amen. up and coming. The changing of the affairs. He gave it to his disciples and those that believe the disciples, those that believe the apostles, they're standing in that truth. So there's only one truth that they may be one. That's a glory. That's magnificence. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold what? The traditions of the gospel which you have been taught, whether by word or by epistle, now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which have loved us and given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish you, here it is, in every good work and work, and every good word, but you gotta be in a good word. If you're sanctified, if you're in the right. sanctification, you gotta be in a good word. You show a fault in your character if somebody points out what you're doing is wrong and you start reviling because you called to be established in every good word and work. Mm. Every good word and every good work. Now let's take a look here. Amen. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 1. Could we mention sanctification? 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 1. And we're going to read to verse 7. Brother, beloved, please. Amen. Furthermore, furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren. And exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us, how ye ought to walk and to please God, mm -hmm. so ye would abound more and more. Okay. For ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification. Brother Beloved, they said, ye know what commandments we gave you by our Lord Jesus. When he's telling them, you know what commandments, can we deal with that for one second? When yes. he said, you know what commandments, what authoritative mm. order an important rule given by God that tells you how to behave. When he said, you know what commandments, it was authoritative order and a rule given by God to tell you how to behave. Mm. Amen. To tell someone to do something in a forceful way. So the gospel, the commandments are authoritative orders telling us how to, here it is, kids, saints, how to be. Have, and it's exerting a dominating influence over our life and our mind. So you know what commandments we gave you of the Lord, these authoritative orders telling you how to behave. And he's going to explain it here. Go ahead. For this is the will of God. First Thessalonians 4 verse 3. Mm -hmm. for this is the will of God, even your sanctification. This is the Father's desire for you. That you should abstain from fornication. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, mm -hmm. not in the lust of concupiscence, mm -hmm. even as the Gentiles which know not God. Caught up in how you feel, the ecstasy of your own thoughts, as the Gentiles that know not God. Go ahead. Mean, know not God, meaning what did the word say? No, not how you feel. What did the word say? No, 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 no. Not the vanity of your mind, not the hype, not your imagination. What did the king say? What is the commandment? that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter mm -hmm. because that the Lord is the avenger of all such as we also have forewarned you and testified mm -hmm. for God have not called us into uncleanness, but unto holiness. He therefore that despiseth despises not man, but God who hath also given unto us his Holy spirit, but as touching brotherly love. ye need not that I write unto you, Good. For ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. Mm -hmm. And indeed, ye do it toward all the brethren which are in all Macedonia. Mm -hmm. But we beseech you, brethren, that ye increase more and more. Mm -hmm. And that ye study to be quiet and to do your own business and to work with your own hands as we commanded you. That ye may walk honestly toward them that are without. Do not be underhanded. Look what it's showing us here. 
So we're reading about conduct and behavior. Are we seeing it? When you read throughout all the epistles, the Lord was correcting their conduct and their behavior because the sanctification of the spirit is for you to be a person of good word and good works. No stealing, no plagiarism. No stealing, no plagiarism. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> but, but beloved, but you see verse six? Look at verse six, right? It says right. that, you, that no man may go beyond the word of the Lord and defraud his brother. Why? Because when somebody's corrected, that's how they end up defrauding you. Mm. If you tell a brother or a sister what they're doing, in, but sister, you shouldn't do that because the that's word right. says that's how they begin to defraud you. Why do mm. they call Jesus a Samaritan? Why do they call him a devil? Why do they say he cast out devils by the prince of devils? Why did they say he was besides himself? Why did they say he was mad? Because he corrected them. Mm. Why did they call John a devil? Because he corrected them. Because he corrected them. He just showed them what their father said. He just showed them the scripture where they're doing wrong. And look at what? They had a cane like response, but they called themselves faithful. They had a cane like response, mm. but they called themselves religious. So meaning what? They didn't understand about the flesh. Man, God's perfect, brother. God, why are you saying that, brother? We know he's perfect, but there's a reason why you said that. Explain, please. You see, <laughs> the Lord, he got all bases covered, man. You can't go around him. You can't go beneath him. You can't go over him. You're not going through him. He got all bases covered, man. Mm -hmm. No forms of unrighteousness or lying or fraud or deceit or hatred or lust or fornication. None of those are getting past him. The word is written for edification, man, so we may learn and know and understand. God got everything covered, man. So, so brother, beloved, the word man, is written plan for ed himself. The word is written for edification? Yes. To reform us and to improve us. Amen. To act in accordance with the standard. That's right. Okay, let's go. Because we're only hurting ourselves, man. We'll be, we, when you're disobedient, you only hurt yourself. You know, brother, says that, you know, we, we, uh, brother, beloved, and myself, we've been talking. There's a lot of scriptures we show. The amount of work that's done in the background with Inspiring Faith, um, Maccabus, Amen. Indigo, Philemon, um, the aid and support in the background of our families is to give you evidence for you to be persuaded to live it. This is beyond winning a debate. You got to win the debate of your, you have to win the debate between your flesh and the spirit. Mm. Where the flesh is condemned, where the flesh is put to silence. You got to win, you have to win that war between the flesh and the spirit where you're walking in the spirit and you're not obeying the lust of the flesh. You have to win there. And if you win there, right, then everything else is light work. Because that's where the win is at. That's right. You have to win the battle between that's warring in your members. You have to win the battle huh. with the gain scene in your flesh. You have to win the battle with your anger and with your malice and your imagination. If you win the battle with your imagination, then anybody else's imagination is going to be easy. You can show them how, how you got out of yours. Amen. If you rule your own spirit, then you could tell, teach another person, no, I don't need to rule over you. You need to rule your own spirit. That's right. Because that's what parents do. You teach a child enough knowledge and wisdom and understanding so that, so that what? They can be self-governing. They can be self-regulating. They can be self-evaluating. They can be still with self-improvement. That's the whole point of the tutoring. The tutoring is for the adulting of the child so that they can what? They can end up judging for themselves. Amen. They can end up correcting themselves. If we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. That's the whole point of learning judgment. So you come to the point already where you have an operating conscience that you can see right from wrong for yourself. Amen. Let's take a look at his brother, beloved, please. Proverbs chapter 30, verses 11 to 13. This is why they were offended. Let's read. There is a generation that curseth their father and doth not bless their mother. Mm-hmm. There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes and yet is not washed from their filthiness. No sanctification. They're not dedicated for divine use. They're not elevated in their character. Brother and sister, we call from out from the world to the kingdom. 
if we will be oriented to the kingdom standard, to the high calling, and you walking in the kingdom, does your behavior re reflect nobility? Or are you an angry man or an angry woman? As what? We're wearing those brushes, the black man and the black woman, the angry man and the angry woman. Are we beyond the anger and dealing with an excellent spirit? Because a man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. Have we come to the excellent spirit or are we pure in our own eyes? And not washed in my own filters. Showing you the gospel is not for you to be pure in your own eyes. You have to be washed. Showing you there is a sanctification where you are dedicated to divine uses. Take a look. Amen. There is a generation. Oh, how lofty are their eyes. And their eyelids are lifted up. We living in that generation. People live by their own rules. It, it tells you in the book of Judges, they did what's right in their own eyes. They didn't care. But they don't understand there's a spiritual law and that's why the prisons are filling up. That's why the cemeteries are filling up. That's why pain is increasing. That's why divorces are increasing. That's why people are not talking to other people because people are pure in their own eyes and they don't share the same God. They don't share the same law. Lord, they don't share the same values. They don't share the same faith. They're not in a pure love. And because mm. people are exalting themselves instead of humbling themselves, saying Christ's way is the way we should live. And that's what I surrender to. And if you surrender to that, then I'm going to love you as Christ told me to love you. We're supposed to be in that, that reciprocity and that agapeo, that filial love first there. You have to be in the agape where you see the Father's love, move in the agapeo love where we're in our duties and our decorum and in our manners and our conversation and our self-discipline and in our care. We're supposed to be reformed. We're supposed to know how to act right. And if we know how to act right, Brother Beloved? Yes, brother. If your child will not act right, can they go out and play with the neighbor's children? Nope. So how are you going to talk about filio without understanding the agapeo? Love. You can't. How are you going to be a... Ch how are you going to play with our... I mean, how are you going to know how to deal with fellowship if you don't know how to be a son? Mm. How to be a daughter first? Where's your respect to the father of spirits, to the Lord Jesus Christ, to the standard, to the kingdom? You have to respect the house that you're in before you can what? Intermingle, before you can socialize, before Amen. you can be in a... Endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. How can you keep the unity of the spirit if you don't know the spirit? It's impossible. If you don't know the Lord to that depth, if, if you're not in that conduct. There's a generation whose teeth are what? There is a generation whose teeth are as swords and their jaw teeth as knives to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among men. Men in their mouth is always chopping and chewing. They like to chew people out. They like to insult. And I've watched the behavior on YouTube. A lot of people in their private life, they have a history and a pattern of telling people off. Mm -hmm. Of being reproachful and insulting before they came into the gospel. Mm -hmm. If you're in the gospel and you're born again, what? why is that behavior still prevalent? Why is that an option? Like, who do you really think you are? Right. Why aren't you washed from your own filthiness? Because the Lord tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, inspiring faith, can you post that there, that to be a railer, that is filthiness. Hmm. To use innuendos and ambiguous speech. That's filthiness. Yes, it is. If somebody says something to you, brothers and sisters, you're not supposed to go to social media instead of going to the phone and calling that person. You want to know why? Because you're dealing with that gang hoodlum behavior. That's what gangs and hoodlum people, weak natured people do that. Why don't you get on the phone and call the person? Because Matthew 18, it says if you have ought with your brother, go tell it between you and him so that you can do what? So that you can gain their brother. You're supposed to be seeking to gain their brother, not keep lo Aren't you tired of losing all these relationships that you begin could it be true could it be possible that you are a very attacking person that you can never be wrong mm. do you value the person enough to hear them out we supposed to value each other enough to hear them out and like we tell everybody but the beloved myself three four seven three eight four five one five four we make it plain amen if you have a question if you have a grievance or a matter of fact you know what <laughs> See, because you know, Post it. because people need to, you already know, right, beloved? You know, you know already, right? 
you feel like we wronged you, good. If you want to do it on social media, let's do it live so we can respond yeah. and people can see us walk peaceably. People can see reconciliation. People can see people address differences, right, and come to be and operate as peacemakers. Let them see that. I told you, man, yeah. I could have aired out the whole situation where I came from. I could have aired the whole thing out. I could have aired it out because I have the recordings of what they did. I have all the recordings of what they did. So that's why they can't come up here and dispute it. Yeah. But you want to know what? I, do I have the recordings? I have the recordings Absolutely. of what they did, of the underhandedness, the evil, the smear campaign, the smoke screen, the manipulation they did against the people. I have it all. I was in the video department and the edit editing department. So why would you attack a person that has the records? And like you gonna call the accountant the thief and he has the bank records. How could you call the accountant the thief and he got the bank records? And then he can show who withdrew what and who had the pin number and who was the treasurer. That I, the accountant was the accountant, but the accountant did not have access to the account, so, meaning to the bank account. So how you gonna call him a thief? All he has to do is submit the records. And I've always asked him about it. Y'all, y'all, subpoena them. Come up here and call me a liar. I just play a recording and put an end to this. And the reason why I didn't do it is because of this. Because when you see people you love, man, and you respect, people you love and you respect and you honor, and when you see that they can be deviant and malevolent and malicious and cruel and manipulative and deceptive, that thing hurts. And I've never been a person into horror. It's what, beloved? It's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking, man. So instead of sharing all your all my hurt with y'all, I'm just trying to show the healing. I'm just trying to show the, what you got to avoid. Watch out for master manipulators. I always tell you, go look it up. I can't do a class on it right now, but I'm going to do it. Look up master manipulators. Look up covert narcissists. Look these things up, brothers and sisters. Look, look up toxic people. It's very real, man. Master manipulators, covert narcissists, toxic people. Because what I'm going to tell you, brothers and sisters, what they call a narcissist is really a sorcerer. They call them narcissists now, but the Bible calls them sorcerers. That's what they are. Where they speak to you, right? And they, they want to give out that they're some great one. And think you, from you think they're some great one, you remove the standards as if they're the vicar of Christ. And you don't hold them to the word. But if Jesus Christ was held to the word, then everybody's held to the word. Period. You have to look these things up. You have to look up histrionic personality disorder. Look these things up for yourself. Look up superficial positivity. So I told you, got some homework, right? Massive manipulators, covert narcissists, toxic behavior, histrionic personality disorder. Superficial positivity. Superficial, what is superficial positivity, Brother Karadza? Superficial positivity where people will say stuff just to go with the sway of the flow of the people. They'll say whatever, they, whatever justifies the ends to the means. But they're not founded. They're not established. They're unstable. They change like the wind. So they just present themselves as if they write about what well, this is right. And then over here they say this. And over there it's just they're just superficial. Right. Nah. Histrionic personality disorder. They went out of their sex symbol. They use they use the eros and, and playing with people, playing with people's sexuality in order to get their attention. Look up the histrionic personality disorder. Look up mm -hmm. covert narcissists where people they want to be the center of attention. And if they see that you have talents or abilities, they'll cleave to you. They'll act like they're your friend because they want to copy you. They want to imitate you. And when they feel they got your personality down, what do they do afterwards? They try to destroy you. These are what happened. But this is not exclusive to any group. This is what international is global is taking down the world because it's wow. all the prince of the power of the air is spiritual wickedness in high places and there's a pattern to sin upon the earth and nobody didn't teach it to me. I had to learn it. I had to study it and brother and sister, I had to suffer. So I'm warning y'all about it. That's why I tell you, hold everybody accountable. Okay. Wow. So let's go here. Let me see if anybody said anything. Let me see. Ooh, right. one, day, one day somebody might click. Yeah. yeah. This is soulless being. It's abuse, creates narcissistic. Absolutely. Okay, look at what this sister said right here, right? And I'm going to just mention this for a second. Soulless beings 
Abuse and neglect between child and parent creates a narcissistic personality disorder. Child-mindedness in adult life, which is what do you call it? It's called infantilism. Possessing childlike traits in adult life. Amen, says Veronica. That's why wow. the Lord said parents, about parents, right? right. Bring up your ch children in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. Because what's the dark side if you don't do it? If you neglect to show them that love. Do you know that you're going to raise a monster? Mm -hmm. You know if the guardian and the source of love don't give it to them, then the child's going to demand to be the center of attention in society and they'll be willing to kill, they'll be willing to steal, they'll, will, they'll be willing to defraud, they'll be willing to attack and revile anybody who does not acknowledge them as a center of attention because they missed it in their house or they missed it from their spiritual leader or they missed it from who they desired to get it from and somebody else looked over that, somebody looked over that person and gave it to, and not gave it, somebody looked over them and gave it to somebody else and they're retaliating from that so now they got to be the center of attention and nobody else can have a talent and nobody else can be a knowledge and nobody else is valuable this is all toxic behavior yep but look it's because of what unnurtured souls have erred inspiring faith can you post that unnurtured souls have erred wow that's why it's so important to purify your soul and obey the truth through the spirit and I'm, let, let, me say, let me say this, right? Um, you can't be uncomfortable with truth. Sanctify them through that truth, that word of truth. We have to deal with truth. Amen. You just Show said something very profound. Go ahead, brother. Um, you said that, you know, Christ had, Christ had to follow the standard. Yeah. Of the, of the word. The word itself had to follow the standard of the word. The word had to obey the word? Come on, man. That's magnanimous on a whole nother level. That's perfection. That's what God, that's, that's God, man. That's the Lord. The word had to obey the word. So he spoke it and he had to live it. Mm. He spoke the word and he had to live what he spoke. When he said, so speak you, right. so you do, he had to live by that. Absolutely. And he did. So, wow. the, so my brother said, this, that's my goal. I slip sometimes. So in the slip, right? Blessed is a man that findeth wisdom. Do you see why you slipped? Are we increasing in knowledge when we slip? See, we have to gain knowledge when we slip. Right. And that's how you don't become a repeated offender. <laughs> I mean, if you keep Amen. falling into the you're not going to keep falling into the, driving your brand new car into the same pothole. So no. that pothole. You're going to go around that pothole. You're going to slow around when you get to that corner. And if you don't slow around, you know what? When you break that axle and you take it to the mechanic and you pay that three, $4,000, you want to know what? You might not drive that block no more. That's right. Because you're going to use you, wisdom. You're going to use what? You're going to use wisdom. You're, you're going you to call wisdom. the city. Listen, <laughs> there's a pothole at such and such. A, a couple people got their cars damaged. May want to come patch this thing up. <laughs> <laughs> There's different levels to the wisdom. You're going to be proactive now, huh? Proactive, brother. It happened to you and you don't want it to happen to nobody else? Exactly. So, okay, Amen. All right. Go, all right. Amen. <laughs> so, <laughs> we put the scripture up here because we're showing you these are the things you're supposed to be washed from. Okay? If you call the brother, you're not supposed to be doing this. Okay? You're not supposed to slip and do it. You're not supposed to do it. Why? Because you've been sanctified. Okay, let's go mm. over here now. You've been sanctified. You got to know what happened to you. Amen. I tell you, I, I mentioned a story a, a while ago that somebody, let me see something here one second. Yeah, um, I mentioned this a while ago that a guy stole while I was working on the street and a guy stole a bag with like maybe like $900 worth of hats. And there was another brother that I was working with and he called me on the phone. I said, God stole the bag, but I got him. And I ran, I ran, shh, shh, shh. I ran like two blocks full speed. And the, the guy was taller than the other brother. So he was like, the, the guy was trying to have his way with the other brother. And I was so upset, man. I jumped and I had my hand and my force to just pin him against the car to stop the theft. And the spirit took, 
I felt the spirit take all the strength out of my hand and say, Karate, don't hurt him. That's a brother. So I know about the Lord intervening and, and slowing you down. Just took me down. I jumped in the air, put me down on the ground. And that force I was in just shut it down and said, just speak to him. That's it. Don't go no further. I said, brother, we struggling man, on these streets. We trying to sell and do an honest living. Mm -hmm. You can't do us like that. And then the brother said, you know what? I'm, I'm sorry, man. So it didn't turn into a fight. But the Lord stopped me. So the Lord will intervene. Even when you feel that you justified, no, you're not. That's why David said the Lord kept me back from my own sin. Mm. So this is real. All right, let's talk. Amen. So who wants to hear how y'all want to hear about love? Don't y'all want to hear about love? I want to hear about love and sanctification and people offended in Christ. Why? Because in Christ is a lot of correction. There's a lot of correction that we have to deal with. I thought this and I was wrong. I thought that and it was wrong. It's all part of the walk. Let's read. Jeremiah chapter 37, verse 18. Moreover, Jeremiah said unto King Zedekiah, What have I offended against thee or against thy servants or against this people? That ye have put me in prison. Meaning, what did I do wrong, man? Where was my displeasure? Why is it all was it? How did I wound your feelings? Because the only thing Jeremiah did was tell him what the word said. So why did they put him in prison? Why did the holy people put Jeremiah? But the scripture said he was a lover of the brethren. <laughs> it's fine, Vicky. You get that, please. Where it said Jeremiah was in Maccabees, the great lover of the brethren. Why did they put the lover of the brethren? in prison meaning we don't want to hear you telling us what that we were wrong uh. even though things are going wrong don't tell us how to fix this don't tell us how to make it straight don't let us en encourage us in being crooked first samuel 9 verse 9 brother brother beloved please before time in israel when a man went to inquire of god thus he spake come and let us go to the seer for he that is now called a prophet was before time called a seer. Okay, so brother and sister, why, what were they seeing? It was showing the people the way to profit, the way to be successful, the way to live. That's what he was showing them. So why did they put the prophet in the prison? Because they were offended. He said, well, what would I do to you? What, 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 where have I offended you? Mm. Because the flesh is in enmity with God. The New Testament shows about the sickness of the condition. That's what it shows. Let's take a look at this now. Let's go look at a few verses where holiness is speaking, love is speaking, kindness is speaking, and look at the look at how the people respond. Take a look at this here. Mark chapter 6, verses 1 to 2. Mm -hmm. And he went out from thence and came into his own country, mm -hmm. and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence has this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him, mm -hmm. that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? Mm -hmm. Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph, and of Judah and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? Mm -hmm. And they were offended at him. Okay, I want to show y'all something, saints. I want to show y'all something here, okay? Um, let's take a look at this one second. Why do they have this response? Because the flesh moves that way. It moves in that mindset. Let's take a look. Why are we looking at this? So that we don't respond this way. The things written a fourth time were written for our what? For our learning. Okay. Amen. Okay, let's take a look here. Come back this way. Let's take a look here. Let me see. Is this it? I'm going to show y'all something. Take a look at this. Brother Beloved. Yes. They were, they were offended at him? Yes. Saints, y'all ready? Take a look at this. <laughs> right here it said they were offended at him, right? See it? Right. Beloved, is not this the carpenter's son? Um, Yeah, take it off the screen. Oh, no, you can leave that right there. Look. Leave it there? Okay. Can, yes, because we're just going to click on the word offended. See what it says offended right here? See yes. See the mouse? Yep. See what it says right here? It says G4624. Right? right? 
Remember this, by the grace of the Lord. My name is Brother Karadazar, and tonight we have with us... Brother Beloved. Brother Beloved, we are servants in Risen with Christ Ministries, Born Again Israelite Ministries, to aid you and help you in your faith. Absolutely. The Lord gave us a testimony. He made it plain to our mind. And you know what happened? The Lord, free, we freely receive, so we're freely giving. That's what we're doing. Amen. All right. Now, let's take a look at this here. Watch this. Y'all know this, right? We always say, ask, we, we, sometimes, we, we, most of the time, we forget. Actually, to support the ministry, we will not be doing a Patreon. We're not going to have Patreon classes. The Patreon classes are already on YouTube. You get four-hour classes twice a week and links and <laughs> where it's plain and you can interact. So you have the number. You, you don't have to call, do a Patreon. You can speak to us personally for 30 minutes. If you are this type of Patreon, we're not doing that. We too indebted to the Lord for what he did in our life. We too right. indebted. He saved us. He saved us and we so thankful. And I spoke to the Lord when I first started seeking the gospel. I said, Lord, if you make this plain for me and I can see this, I'm going to show it to the people plainly the way you gave it to me. Amen. But the Lord corrected me last week, right? And said, Corrales, you got to stop omitting the part about supporting the ministry because you can't show your own righteousness. This ain't your righteousness. If I said they're supposed to support the ministry, just tell them what I said. And let those whose hearts are, are touched by the word, let them respond. So to you, brothers and sisters, that you support the ministry, we thank you sincerely. Amen. And may the Father in Christ do wonderful Absolutely. things in your life. May you do wonderful things in your life. And people who, do, people who give little and people who send, send words of encouragement, right? Because right. y'all keep doing it. Because, listen, we're swimming upstream with this. And we pray that y'all are blessed and Amen. that your life is nourished and your life is fruitful and that there's a plentiful harvest. Now, we're we going for y'all to have 60-fold, 90-fold, 100-fold. <laughs> listen, we pray that your, your joy may be full. Okay? Amen. That this, all, all this fertilizing will make you more fruitful in your life and that you may grow in grace in the knowledge of the Son of God and be mighty worshipers and be signs of Christ's faith. And, and of disciples in your areas and in your towns and your communities and in your families. Okay. Now. Amen. We right here is not this the carpenters. It's not this the carpenter. They're not this. It's not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother. Wait, wait, wait. He's a carpenter. No, he's not the savior. It's not this the carpenter. <laughs> it's, they said Christ was just a carpenter. All right. He's a carpenter of the universe. But take a look. <laughs> He's a, yeah, he's the carpenter of the universe. See, look Amen. at the saints. Offended. F G46. Oh. You want me to take it off? Take it off, beloved. Take it off so I, 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 I can see this. Mm. Take it off so y'all can see this. Please. Yeah, I got a glimpse of that. Whoa. They were offended at him. What does it mean, saints? Take a look at this. He told them all oh. his love. He did all these miracles. And look at the attitude they had. Look at their response. Look at the wrong attitude. The scandalize from G4625 to entrap. Mm. That is trip up, figuratively stumble, mm -hmm. transitively or entice to sin, apostasy or displeasure. Make to offend. Brothers and sisters, when they heard apostasy, when they saw, apostasy. apostasy, when they saw the mighty works that he did, their response to love was to scandalize it. Oh. Their response to love, their response to correction was to scandalize it. That is horrible. That's the word. Are we looking at it? <laughs> I see why Christ said that, man. A prophet is not without honor, man. Oh, but so in you his wanna, own country. So in the next verse, what do they do? Read that, brother. Go ahead, brother. But go ahead, read it. Then. Let's mm. take it off this. Let's take it off the screen. Go ahead. But Jesus said unto them, "A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country, 
and among his own kin and in his own house. In his own country, among his own kindred, and in his own house, amongst his family members, and even amongst his relatives, he was what? He was, he didn't show them the proper honor. They were offended. They scandalized. They were displeased. They were annoyed. They were angry. They were not thankful. They were not appreciative. They were not humble. So if they, would, if they treated Christ this way, if Christ be in you, this is how they're going to respond. To what? To true love. They scandalized it. Uh, so we're going we're gonna to clear up something where people misinterpret a scripture. Right? There's a scripture that's always being misinterpreted, right? Right. Um, let me see this right here. Is it Proverbs? Uh, let me make sure. Proverbs 28. Is it Proverbs 28? Let me see one second here. Proverbs 18. Let me see something. So they were offended. Instead of being appreciative, instead of being touched, why were they offended? Because he was that great. And what people do, if somebody can do something better than them, they become angry. They become envious. They were offended because they were envious of him. Instead of seeing that I'm here to serve you. Instead of appreciating the love, they were offended. They were displeased. They were resentful. Hold on. They were annoyed. Everybody's quiet. They scandalized them. Uh -huh. Okay, you see this scripture right here? A lot of people use this verse incorrectly. Brother Beloved, can you read this here, please? Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 19. Yes, that one, yep. A brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city, and their contentions are like the bars of a castle. Okay, people use this scripture to say, look, you offended the brother, man. You can't win him um, than a strong city because you offended him. But wait a minute. Jesus said, blessed is a man that's not offended in me in Matthew 11, verse 6. This scripture, a brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city, has been misinterpreted because we're going to look here. Brother says it has to be in harmony with the scriptures. Mm -hmm. It has to be in harmony. Now look here. Let's, take, let's look together. A brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city. Do you see the word offended right here? It's H6586. H Can we read that, beloved, please? Yep. Pasha. A primitive root rather identical with H6585 mm -hmm. through the idea of expansion. Go ahead. To break away from just authority. That is trespass, apostatize, quarrel, offend, rebel, revolt, transgress. So a brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city. What is he doing? When he, when he breaks away from just authority, when he apostatizes. When he throws down the word, how are you going to win him back? It's not talking about that you speak into a brother and you show him the scripture and he was offended. That's not what it's talking about. When it's saying a brother right here is offended, a brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city. When he throw down righteousness, when he don't care no more, how can you make him care? When he becomes cold, how can you make him warm? When he's ruthless, how are you going to make him what? Selfless. When he becomes dishonest and he throw away all principles of what is righteous and true, how are you going to win him? Meaning, what is he offended? He's offended at God. He's offended, a brother offended, meaning Cain. How are you going to convert Cain? Okay, so let's stop. We can stop mis misinterpreting the scripture. To you, wisdom. you can't misinterpret. Beloved, go ahead. I'm here for me. Go ahead. No, no, I'm just, you know, I'm, that's beautiful, brother. Wow. But they use the scripture, brother offended, wow. it's harder to be one than a strong city to promote their grudges, to promote their bitterness, to promote their strife. Brother, when you're learning the scriptures, it's all for correction. It's all for reform and improvement to us to be partakers right. of wholeness. So the Lord will never give you a license to sin. So it can't mean what the carnal mind says it means. There must be some deeper spiritual understanding because the Bible is always talking about excellence. It's always telling us to be magnanimous. It's always telling us to be holy. It's always telling us to be just. So a brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city, meaning when he breaks away from just authority. Can we get an example? Look at Saul. When Saul broke away from just authority, he couldn't be won back. He collapsed. His mind collapsed. His, his what? His mind collapsed. Because you go into mental aberration when you break away from just authority. When you hold the truth and unrighteousness, then what happened? You go into mental aberration. 
You get what? You get a strong delusion to believe a lie. When you don't retain God in your knowledge, you end up with a reprobate mind. That's why how are you going to win him back? The Lord got to give him repentance to acknowledge the truth because you can't win him. Mm. Okay. Could you change? Okay. Could you, could you change Judas's mind? Oh, okay. No. Oh, you couldn't? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Now, so when we're dealing with the word offended, they were offended at Christ. What does it mean that we, they were offended at Christ? We're looking at it here. They scandalized him. We're going to do it again. We're going to show it again. Why they, how are you scandalizing love? Because, because, you're, because the standard bearer is showing right, and he says, you're not there. You're far from it. Mm. So now we have to aspire to the greatness. Brother, beloved. Yes, brother. Saints, y'all remember when y'all was younger? They said they were, this, yeah, somebody on your block, they said it was so fast. This person's the fastest guy in the whole area. He's so fast. Mm -hmm. Right. Then somebody go get their cousin. And their cousin <laughs> visiting, <laughs> beloved laughing. <laughs> their cousin visiting during the summer. Right. And this guy that was fast was humiliating everybody, making fun of them, right? And right. you got a cousin that visited you during the summer. And the cousin came. So I'll race anybody, all this stuff, insulting people. Mm -hmm. And your cousin, your cousin said, I'll race you. And the cousin comes on the block. And they said, go on your marks. Get ready. Get set. Go. And then, you just, and then this person's cousin end up being like a bird. <laughs> <laughs> It's like the person wasn't even running on pavement anymore. They took their shoes off and they, they shot down the block. And that person ended up being what? Humbled. <laughs> because you're not supposed to have skills to vaunt over other people and make them feel like nothing. Because that's were right. you good? Were you good? There's somebody that's better. So Amen. walk humbly with your God. Amen. You remember that? I remember those incidences. I remember them. I remember Look, that. You remember them, right? Everybody yeah. has those childlike incidences. You're the fastest swimmer or you're the fastest bike rider. And then somebody come that's real cool and that's real chill and what and give you a good spanking. A spanking of what? Spank your pride, spank your ego, spank your arrogance, spank your hubris, spank your vanity, right? And show you that we just people, man. That's right. Let's just have a good time. Let's not try to embarrass each other. All right, because it's all about the joy. If it don't end up being joy, right. then what? What profit of it? If you can, if you can, um, if you have all understand all wisdom, First Corinthians thirteen. If you understand all wisdom and all knowledge, um, and you can speak with the tongue of angels. If you don't have charity, if the end result ain't love, it was all nothing. So love is showing to the people. The Lord Jesus Christ is showing love to the people, and people are embarrassed, brother beloved, because they were offended, right? Right. At how sweet he was. Mm. How thoughtful, how considerate. They were offended, right? But why don't you ask him about his cultivation? Why don't you ask him about the fertilizing? Why don't you ask him about the scourging? You want you ask him about the battle? Why don't you ask him about how he became who he is and the battle to remain who he is? Why don't you ask him that? Go ask him. Amen. So all you brothers and sisters that are loving and are kind and are just, we know, we pray for you. We pray the Lord, God, our Father, and Jesus Christ keep you because we know it ain't easy being you. A lot of people are offended. Yeah. They are offended, right? If you try to do what's right, all that will live godly in Christ is going to suffer persecution. People are offended if you don't want to be mediocre. They are offended. Mm. If you don't want to be mediocre, they are offended. They want to deal with life with salt and black pepper. People need savory. They want to take the chicken out the pack, beloved, okay, right. And, right. and put it in a pot and just throw some salt and pepper on it and bought no. They no. don't want to. They don't want to clean the chicken. They don't want to clean the chicken with some vinegar and some some lemon and and drop some clove powder in there mm. and let, let it, it marinate soak, and let, let it soak, soak a little. It. Let it soak a little bit mm. and take it out and wash it off and drop your.
herbs and, and drop your spices and you know what I'm saying and pray over it and, and make sure that the, 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 the meat accepts the seasoning and it, they all become one that there's a synergy between mm. the spices and the meat you want the synergy you don't want the seasoning you ever had food where the seasoning is on stop on top of the food but it didn't get in the food no because right. there ain't no synergy you want this you want it to be a synergy between the herbs mm. The food changed color. And the meat. Well, you want the food to change color. You want it to be one. Like we were born to be together. Mm. That's why Lord said Christ Jesus is a sweet smelling savor. That's what we're talking about. He's a sweet smelling savor. I mean, all the qualities is all down to the bone and marrow. I mean, the love is always that deep. Mm -hmm. That's Amen. what it's supposed to be out. Nobody wants nothing bland, man. Everybody want love that's spicy. That's right. And the God is telling us in the kingdom to love is spicy. Okay, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> they were offended at him. Okay, so we're coming back here. <clears throat> they were offended at him. Okay, we looked at that again. One more time. What does it say here? I offended. Well, they were offended at him. I was so happy. I love to learn. You love to learn. We love him what the Lord is doing in our life, right? Okay, That's right. let me see right here. Let's take a look. Look, they were offended. Look, they began to scandalize him. So if Christ be in you when you show the word, blessed it be when men shall revile you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. If you stand on the word, they're going to be offended. They're not offended at you. They're offended at the word. See, they were offended at the word. See, offended at the word. What it tells you over here, let's go back over here. Let's take this off. Let's go to Matthew 13. Let's go to Matthew 13, 21. Mm, no, 21. Let me see. It's not that is not Matthew 13 21, brother Clutter. No, oh, yeah, that's Mark. Yeah, yeah, because I'm in Mark. I'm in Mark. Thank you, brother beloved. Matthew 13 well, 21. Brother. Yes, what does it say right here? Yet hath he not root in himself, but doeth for a while. But when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word. By and by, he is offended. The yeah, people are offended at the word because the word is correcting us. Okay, so brother and sister, we don't want to be offended at the word. We want to love the truth. We want to let the word correct us. We listen, we want the medicine to heal us. We want to be fruitful. Okay, now let's come That's back right. here. We don't want to be offended at love. No, we want to stay on that life. Because we don't know everything. The Lord is correcting us. And if a brother, if a brother or sister is able to guide you in the word, remember he was coming from a point where he didn't know everything or he didn't know. First of all, nobody knows everything. That's why he told Job, you don't know it all. Give me Peleas. Right. Bring again the day that's yesterday. There's some people that do have a good, firm understanding of the gospel, but this is not about vaunting and about knowing everything, meaning certain questions that people are asking, some says brothers and sisters in the gospel of Christ that have asked those questions, and they can afford you the answer that the Lord gave them. Okay? And we all increase in knowledge. John Amen. 16, 1. Beloved, please. These things have I spoken unto you, that you should not be offended. Okay, so when Jesus said these things I've spoken unto you that you should not be offended, these things I've spoken unto you that you should not, you should not be offended. Don't be angry. Don't be resentful. Don't have your feelings wounded. Okay? Take a look Amen. here. Matthew chapter 26, verses 29 to 30. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Mm-hmm. And when they had sung in him, they went out into the Mount of Olives. Then saith Jesus, Jesus unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. Mm. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. But after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. So brother said they, they were offended at him, meaning they were hurt. They were with Christ, and what happened is there was an event that happened. It was it hurt them. He said, "All oh, of you are gonna be offended. You're gonna be hurt here." They didn't resent him. They were un they were displeased. It wounded their feelings. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Let's go. Peter answered and said unto him, "Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended." <laughs> Tough talk. Now look, though all men should be offended, Peter. I gotta, gotta love Peter, right? Gotta love Peter, man. I'm not gonna be angry, Lord. My feelings ain't <laughs> gonna be hurt. Uh, oh, Peter, you the one that was just saying a minute ago that Christ shouldn't be crucified, okay? 
Now Christ is saying, all of you are going to be offended. Now you're telling the Lord that you're not going to be offended. He told you you're going to be offended. Hmm. Oh, Peter, are what you're saying the sources of reality or is what Jesus said the source of reality? You stronger than I say you are, Peter? <laughs> See, ain't nobody stronger than how the Lord say you are. So we're going to find right. out. Then Peter said unto him, read 33 again, beloved, please. Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. Mm -hmm. He just canceled the rest of his brothers. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so he, I'm stronger than all of them. All Everybody of them. Everybody else. I'm strong. <laughs> they, though what? Though all men put his chest out. Yeah. Never would I be offended. Why? Because he loves the Lord. Right. Right? But Peter... He was not what? He was not converted yet. No. He didn't have that power yet right. to be who we even wanted to be. He said, though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. <laughs> that ain't possible. Watch this. <laughs> Jesus said unto him, verily I say unto thee. Mm -hmm. the this is the absolute truth. Verily I say unto thee mm -hmm. that this night before the cock crow, Thou shalt deny me thrice. Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. Likewise also said all the disciples. He said that never. That ain't going to happen, Lord. He said if I die tonight with you, within 24 hours, right? <laughs> within 24 hours, look. Three his, times. His medal was, listen, his breastplate was checked. And he came to weeping. Yeah. He wished he would have stood. He went away sad. Blood, brother, beloved, read that part again. When I get this verse, let me get wow. that one second. Go ahead. Matthew chapter 26, verses 33 to 35. Meaning, you know, sometimes you think you're ready. I can do it. I can do it. I can, you're not ready yet. You're yeah, not ready, there. Peter. You're going to deny me three times, Peter. Peter, that's what and you're going to do. And it's the Lord telling him this. Yeah, truth. Amen. Reality speaking here. I'm telling you the future. This is how you're going to handle this. And I'm right. going to be there in your shortcomings, in your errors. I am going to be there with you. Amen. Because they're going to smite the shepherd and the sheep going to be scattered. He said, oh, yeah, when they smite you, Lord, that I'm one sheep, I'm not going to be scattered. Okay? He said, okay. He said, though I would die, I'm ready to die with you tonight. He said, within, the, within this night. Before the cock crow, before the sun rise. Mm -hmm. Fully, you're going to deny me. In a few hours, Peter. And then Peter said, Lord, though I should die with thee, I will not deny thee. Likewise, also said all the disciples, because they were committed soldiers, but they were not empowered yet to stand right. there. They were committed soldiers. They were valiant. But listen, but they didn't have the power yet to mm. stand where Christ stood. Amen. And that's the, and that's where the challenge is. <laughs> that's rough. <laughs> they didn't have the power yet. They didn't have the power. But it that's came. Right. It came. All right. Let me see. As a matter of fact, you know what? Let me give me give me one second, Saints. So um, in the weakness, the Lord know where we're going to falter. Yeah. You know where we're going to falter. And look, look, Peter drew the sword. He thought he was ready. My friend, let me, let's go here. Let's go here. Come on. Peter drew the sword, brother, brother. He drew the sword. Yes, he did. He drew, he drew the sword. Matthew 26. Look, he was, the Lord said, you're going to be offended. You're gonna be, your feelings going to be hurt tonight. Uh, Matthew yeah. 26, brother beloved, 51. And behold, one of them which were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck <laughs> a servant in the high priest and one struck a servant of the high priest and smote off his ear. You know, that's Peter right there. Go ahead. The whole, there's a whole bunch going on, man. He said, nah. Mm -mm. Then Jesus said unto him, put up again that sword into his place. For all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Mm -hmm. Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father, and he shall presently give me more than a twelve legions of angels? Mm -hmm. But how then 
shall the scriptures be fulfilled. It got to go that, this way, Peter. It got to go this way. Go ahead. That thus it must be. In that same hour said Jesus to the multitudes, are you come out as against a thief with swords and staves for to take me? I sat daily with you teaching in the temple, and you laid no hold on me. But all this was done that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. Are you, so you see it? So it came to pass. It happened what the Lord said. Now we're going to go down to this, this bottom verse right here, right? Where Peter denies Christ. We're just going to read verse 70. Mm. Let's read. <laughs> let's read 69. Blah, blah, let's read it. And, and we're saying this because the Lord is telling them they're going to be offended. You, your feelings are going to be hurt. How they're going to treat me is going to hurt you because when you love someone, when they're mistreated, it hurts you. And the reason why some people, when you're hurt, brothers and sisters, it don't bother them because they were not connected to you like that. But the disciples of Christ, they were all connected to Christ. So when people abused him and mistreated him, they were hurt by it. They felt that pain because they were bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh. They were deeply, emotionally, and spiritually involved. They were true yoke fellows. So Peter's right, moving right. to try to defend Christ. And Peter said, the Lord telling Peter, Peter, listen, the scripture got to be fulfilled. I can command legions of angels, but the scripture got to be fulfilled. I mean, I can defend myself, Peter. I don't need you to defend me, but this has to go down the way it's written to go down. You can't change the script here. This is how it's going to play out. Now, let's take a look at this right here, please. Now, Peter sat without in the palace. Meaning, brothers and sisters, why does love and sanctification and being offended? Because they had to be separated to the Father's will. And even if separated to the Father's will, they had to go through, they were even wounded in their feelings, right? Even when they were wounded in their feelings when they were incorrect. They were wounded in their feelings when they were operating in their zeal, in their vigilance for the Lord. They ended up being wounded because it was a whole new experience. They had to learn. So part of growing pains is learning. And sometimes you feel like you're right and you're wrong because the word said you're wrong. And even though you're wounded in your feelings, you have to continue in the faith and continue to grow and continue to, to develop. Because that type of emotional pains, growing pains, is only in the beginning. And later on, you have more of an ease, more of a surrender, more of a denying of yourself. And it becomes easier to walk with the Lord. Why? Because you, your old man is crucified. You denied yourself. Uh, uh. Uh. Now, Peter sat without in the palace. And a damsel came unto him, saying, mm -hmm. Thou also was with Jesus of Galilee. Mm -hmm. But he did not before them all, saying, I know not what thou sayest. <laughs> and when he was gone out into the porch, another maid saw him and said unto him that were there, This fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. Mm -hmm. And again he denied with an oath, I do not know the man. And after a while came unto him they that stood by and said to Peter, Surely thou also art one of them, for thy speech betray of thee, or be ray of thee. Then began he to curse and to swear, saying, <laughs> I know not the man. And immediately the cock crew. Are we seeing this? Take a look at this. Immediately the cock crew, meaning this. He didn't know what he was going to do when the fear hit him like that. So although he mentally was in agreement, but his flesh was not prepared. He was not battle tested yet. Okay, so he was wounded where? In his feelings. Brothers and sisters, Matthew 11, verse 6. So there was a wounding. So they thought that John was going to be delivered also when Christ Jesus came. And what happened? No, John died yeah. by the hand of Herod because that was the Father's will at that time. Right. Okay. Let's go read, Brother Beloved, please. And blessed is he. Who's Matthew 11 and 6. And blessed is he. Whosoever shall not be offended in me. Okay, so and don't be offended. And why is he saying that? Because you know how the feeling is going to come up. The feeling is going to come up to be offended. We have to come back here so the saints can see the picture. Again, Matthew 11, verse 7. And as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, what went ye out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind? But what went out ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, 
They that wear soft raiment clothing are in king's houses. But what went ye out for to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Verily I say unto you, Among them that are born of woman, there have not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. And if ye will receive it, this is Elijah, which was come, was which was for to come. Um, that's what the Lord said. I'll, if you will receive it, He's telling us this: that John was Elijah, that was for to come, that was prophesied in the book of Malachi. If ye will receive it, because you already know that some people are not going to receive. See, what he's showing here, what he's showing here is that this, because many people thought John should have been delivered with the Messiah, the captain, the commander there, but he was appointed to die by the hand of what Herod, right? But he was right. all, after he died, remember you see John where? In the 17th chapter at the transfiguration, showing that he liveth, because the righteous don't die. When you stand in the obedience, when you stand in the faith, then you stand forever with the Father and with the Lord Jesus Christ. You're just fulfilling the word in your time, in your generation. You appointed eternal life. Inspiring Faith, can you post this verse right here, please? Um, our second Maccabees 15, verse 14 and verse 15. I need both of those, please. Okay. Because they were offended. So the Lord don't want us to be offended when the word, it don't go our way. That's why later on you see the Lord told them, oh fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have said. They were with Christ and they had how they felt it should happen. And that's the point. You offended if you with the Lord, but you have your feelings that you say it should go this way. But it's the Father's will be done, not our will. Okay. Amen. Amen. Right. What happens here? Let's take a look here, brother beloved. Let's take a look what happens here. What does it say? Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 17. Mm -hmm. For great are thy judgments and cannot be expressed. Mm -hmm. Therefore, unnurtured souls have erred. Okay, so unnurtured souls have erred. Why? Because your soul has to be nurtured for you to be loving. Your soul has to be nurtured for you to be loving. There's a note I have here, right? Love. Uh, this is a note from an article, Relevant Magazine. Love across cultures and continents to see if humans are, um, let me, let me clip it from right here. People who focus regularly on God's love through prayer and meditation change. Hear this? People who focus mm -hmm. regularly on God's love through prayer and meditation, they change. They experience less stress and they can experience a reduction in blood pressure. Their prefrontal cortex, the part of the brain associated with focus and attention, becomes more active over time because they what? They focus on God's love through prayer and meditation. And when the prefrontal wow. cortex, that part that's associated with focus and attention, becomes more active over time, it helps them to avoid distraction and become more intentional. They also have more activity in their anterior cingulate cortex. That's the part of our brain associated with love, compassion, and empathy. Focusing on God's love makes us more loving and less angry. One more time. Focusing on God's love makes us more loving and less angry. One more time. Focusing on the Father's love makes us more loving and less angry. Wow. It's, it's easier to forgive others and ourselves because focusing on God's love makes you a person of an understanding spirit. Amen. Okay, they also have more activity in their anterior cingulate cortex. Okay, and as, as we repeated right here, people are, have a great misunderstanding of God because they think that God is angry and vindictive. No way. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. If you look at what happened to the Lord Jesus Christ, you see that God is patient, and God is long suffering. Look at what happened with Adam. Look at what happened with Cain. Cain was not killed after he killed his brother Abel. Look at the patience. Look at the long suffering. Look at the forbearance in the beginning. 
Look what happened with the children of Israel in the wilderness. Look at the patience, the long suffering, the goodness. Look at the agape love. It's all throughout the scriptures. But can we look at it through what? Through the right glasses. Mm. You talked about Jeremiah. They said, Jeremiah said, where have I offended thee? Right? But look what it says about Jeremiah. Who was Jeremiah? What does it say in 2 Maccabees 15, verse 14 and 15? What did it then say? Well, go ahead, please. Then Onias answered, saying, This is a lover of the brethren, who prayeth much for the people and for the holy city, to wit, Jeremiah the prophet of God. Whereupon Jeremiah, holding forth his right hand, gave to Judah a sword of gold, and in giving it spake thus. Oh, you hear this? He gave him a sword of gold. So we just wanted to clip that part right there. That Jeremiah was what? A lover of the brethren. But did they love him back? No. Did they love him back, although he was correcting them? If I can give him give it a minute to turn to my side, to the Zondervan Pictorial Bible Dictionary. Bear me one second. If you look under Jeremiah, I'm going to show y'all something here, right? If you look under Jeremiah and the Zondervan Pictorial Bible Dictionary, here's what it says here. The man and the message. Can we deal with love and correction and reform? Inspiring faith, you can post the part about correction, okay? The man and his message. This is in the Zondervan Pictorial Bible Dictionary, page 411. The man and the message. Jeremiah was called to be a prophet at a most unhappy time. With the failure of Josiah's revival, the final decline of the nation of Israel was underway. When he was called, it was intimated to Jeremiah that his message would be one of condemnation rather than salvation. Yet he was also given a message of hope. Throughout his long ministry of, of more than 40 years, his preaching reflected this theme of judgment, condemnation, and salvation. God had risen early and sent his servants, the prophets, but Israel would not hear. Not a fate predicted for an apostate nation in Deuteronomy 28 to Deuteronomy 30 was inevitable. Babylon would capture Judah and it would be better for people to surrender and to save their lives. This message coming to men whose desperate nationalism was all they had to cling to was completely rejected. And the bearer was rejected with his message. So Jeremiah was rejected with his message. Jeremiah was regarded as a meddler and a traitor. And people, nobles, and kings alternately tried to do him to death. You hear this, man? Wow. He was a love of the brethren. But what? Look at how they slandered him. For telling him was correct. Hmm. He was regarded as a meddler, a traitor, and people, nobles, and kings alternately tried to do him to death. Although he needed the love. Although he needed the love, the sympathy and encouragement of a wife, he was not permitted to marry. And in prohibition, he became a sign of a life that of a life as soon usual was soon to cease for Jerusalem. Because in his book is a full autobiographical section, Jeremiah's confession. Jeremiah's personality can be understood more clearly than any of the other prophets. These outpourings of the human spirit are some of the most poignant and pathetic statements of the tension of a man under divine imperative to be found anywhere in the scripture. The most important are listed below. They show us a Jeremiah who was retiring and sensitive and afraid of the people's faces. One who would consider singly unfit for the work which was placed under him, though he tenaciously clung to his assigned task. Through the succeeding years of rejection and persecution is both a tribute to the metal of the man and to the grace of God, without which his personality would surely have gone to pieces. Wow. Jeremiah's personality would have gone to pieces. Why? Because the people was throwing rock words to destroy him instead of correcting himself. So people would think, meaning this is what Donovan is saying about, people would think he was unfit, but no, he was fit for the job, meaning, because people think because what is commonly believed, you have to be insensitive to represent God. No, you have to be sensitive to represent God. And the Lord lets all your feelings become corrected by the word. Amen. Because you feel for your people.
but yet the reality that they're facing for what? Trying to hotwire life instead of being righteous, you see the inevitable fall. But he clung to his mission. So why is that? Why am I reading that? Because brother says we got to cling to the faith no matter what. We got to cling to it. And he was a love of the brethren, but he didn't have love. He said he didn't have the love of a wife. That's what he says. Right. Because he was a sign of what was happening. Okay. So we're looking here. Correction. Um, let's take a look at this. Correction is it revealing that something needs to change mm. because it is either wrong or unhealthy or dangerous. And change, especially change of the heart, is a task for mankind. Think of parents and their children. The child was born into the families. That's grace. They have all the rights and privileges of being a family member, but they don't immediately or automatically know how to live as a member according to the family values and rules, etc. This is how it is when you become a member of God's family through faith in Christ. You have all the rights and privileges of being a member of the family, but you must know you must now learn how to live as a son or daughter of God. If a child in an earthly family needs correction and discipline to learn the family values and rules, how much more do you and I need correction and discipline to learn to reflect our perfect Heavenly Father? Adam and Eve succumbed to Satan's temptation to defy God, and sin burst onto the scene of human history. Sin brought man into pride, and at the root of this pride is the desire to operate autonomously from our Creator. What does it mean, the desire to operate autonomously? Wow. mean I do what I want to do. That's what the pride. I don't have to submit to the word. I don't have to look what the word says to do. I don't have to check the scripture before I take the action. I can do what I want to do. It's independence. That's what sin does. Mm. Sin brings you into that mindset. Okay? Um, be with me one second. Beloved, go ahead. Man lives like the perpetual two-year-old who wants his or her toys and no one else is allowed to touch them. Completely unaware that all his sustenance and safety is graciously graciously provided to him daily by his parents. This is the beginning of their correction. Wow. Amen. So you see this? All our sustenance are provided to us by our what? By the Father in heaven. So therefore, the correction is to bring you to act in accordance. So we're gonna. I posted a few inspiring verses. I sent you a few verses to post. Um, Zephaniah three verse two, Proverbs three verse eleven to thirteen. There's a few verses here about being corrected. So in the correction, what are we finding? We're finding out how we should act. In the correction, the Lord is showing you that things that happen in life. What the Lord is showing us is to enforce our obedience. You're going the wrong way. Mm. Those are not family values. You're being destructive. Right. Give me, give me, give me, but if I give it to you, do you know how to maintain it? Give me a wife, but do you know how to treat a wife? Give me a husband, but you, you, you know how to be, do you know how to have a husband? Everything that we desire to have, it requires a knowledge to preserve it and to keep it. Amen. It all requires knowledge. Mm. Okay, so we're looking at this here. Oh, um, yes. Oh, yeah, we got a few verses up here. Let's take a look. Let me see if the Inspiring Faith post them. Uh, Inspiring Faith, I sent you some verses. Can you post them, please? Um, okay, take a look at this, Brother Beloved. All right. Zephaniah, chapter 3, verse 2. She obeyed not the voice. She received not correction. She trusted not in the Lord. She drew not near to her God. So what is showing you? She was married. I love her. But when I corrected her, she didn't obey my voice. Mm -hmm. in, her, in her troubles, she did not draw near to her God. So what is showing you? The correction is supposed to make us do what? It's showing you how do we went wrong. Whatever we're going through, we're supposed to draw near to what? God. God, the scripture says in Isaiah, thou poured us out a prayer, we poured out a prayer when thy chastening was upon us. So when the chastening's upon us, it's for us to do what? Pour out a prayer. Lord, show me the right way. Amen. Love sanctifies. 
That's what it does. But many are offended in Christ because the correction, what? It's grievous unto them to forsake the way. That's what it's showing us also here. When you read, and let me get that verse for you, brothers and sisters. Um, correction is grievous unto them to forsake the way. Here it is, it's Proverbs 15, verse 10. Correction is grievous unto them that forsaketh the way. And he that hateth reproof shall die. What they die, they're going to die in their own decisions. <clears throat> Showing you correction is to give us give us life again. Brother and sister, be loving. Amen. Brother and sister, look at the word. What does the word say? Follow the formula. Follow the prescription. Follow the physician's orders. Follow the commandments. Walk in the divine nature. Walk in the love. When you set apart for divine use, then live in a life where you're divinely used. Proverbs 3, verse 11 to 13. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord. I mean, I love you. You're the object of my favor. You're my son. This is what's Amen. repeated in Hebrews. Come here. Let me tell you. Things may be difficult right now. You, things that didn't turn out the way you want. My son, do not despise. Don't become offended in the chastening of the Lord. Not to be weary of his correction. Mm -hmm. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth. Even as a father, the son in whom he delighteth. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding. <laughs> Are we looking at this? <clears throat> do you find wisdom where? Where are you finding the wisdom? We have to find the wisdom when we what? When we error. Amen. We have to find the wisdom when we make mistakes. We have to find the wisdom when? When we, here it is. When we, we have to find the wisdom when we, our faults are brought up. When we deviate. When we, when we do not achieve success, find the wisdom. How do I go about it and do it the right way? Mm. So we can make the changes. So the situation can be remedied. So we can correct our faults. So we can handle the problem and we can improve our own behavior and change our habits and put an end to our, to, to our own evil by introducing a better method and course of action. And then we can act in accordance with facts and truth. Remember, brothers and sisters, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. That means you're coming out of, you're being stripped away from what? From vanity and falsehood and illusion. Okay, let's look here. We just about done. Brother, brother, give me one second here. Take your time, brother. I want to get that note that I was talking to you about. Oh, yes, it's John 6. Oh, about man. being offended. Let's get it. Um, let me see. Inspiring, I know you posted it, but it's way up that let we can't see it. it. Um, John chapter 6. Verse 57 to 61. They offended because they were immature. They're not getting their own way. That's what caused it to rise and depart for this is not your rest. It is holy as polluted. I mean, we have to change. We cannot be autonomous. So can we post that right there? Okay. Um, John chapter 6. Oh, I can put it up. John chapter 6, verse 50. So 57, right? Yeah, 57 to 61. Mm-hmm. Let's take a look at the disciples were standing with Christ and why they walked away. Let's look at what happened here. How can we meaning, meaning, this, meaning this is the response to the word. The offense is the improper response to the word of truth. The response is the darkness in the flesh moving against the light. The offense is the carnal man instead of the spiritual man moving. That's what it is. So when you read in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, and Paul had to correct them in chapter 4, I mean, right. chapter, he said that man should not think more highly of himself than he ought to think, because that's why you move in the era of the word, because you think more highly of yourself than you ought to think. And then when somebody say, brother or sister, you're incorrect right here, then you are offended. Right. Mm. And here's the thing, brothers and sisters, the Lord going to prove your friends. They, they cannot be your friend unless they're a friend to Christ first. Amen. Unless they're they a friend to Christ 
and a friend to the father, they can't be your friend, meaning this. They're going to move in the variance. They're going to try to force you to join them in their disobedience to the word and say that if you, my friend, you will agree with me in me rebelling and, and, and me opposing the Holy Spirit. They're going to try to, they're going to take you out of the agape love, out of the, out of the um, agapeo and try to bring you into the filio, but there ain't no filio. How can you be in the natural feelings and sentiments, right? And we're all in disobedience. I don't think that's possible. That's a gang, not a church. That's right. But and and then what? You have a new leader, a new captain. Okay, brother beloved, go ahead. John chapter six, verse fifty-seven to verse sixty-one. Take a look at this. As the living, as the living Father has sent me, mm -hmm. and I live by the Father. So he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. Okay. This is that bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many therefore of his disciples, when they had heard this, said this is a hard saying. Who can hear it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Doth this offend you? You hear this? When Christ was speaking about his greatness, mm. as my living, as the living Father have sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat bread and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. Now, when he said this about the glory about who he was, it offended them. They were angry. They were annoyed. It displeased them. I mean, they came to a level in the knowledge, right, that this level of worship, this level of discipline caused them to be resentful, angry, wounded. Now look, in themselves, they murmured. They began to scandalize him in themselves, meaning what? He didn't have as much value in them anymore when they saw, when this glory was shown. Right. They murmured meaning he didn't have that value no more. They came out of that honor. They came out of the respect. Because of what? Truth. Hmm. Do this offend you? And it did, although it was true. Offend to cause displeasure, anger, resentment, striking with disgust and revulsion. It is great displeasure or, or to do something calculated to cause anger, stress, or worry by disobeying, violating, transgressing law. That's another part. When you offend, you violate. So they felt that the law in them was trespassed because he told them truth. So some people in the gospel, they can come to one level and the scripture says by and by they are what? Offended. offended. They come to a certain level of truth and then what? They walk away. And then it tells you right here in John chapter 6, verse, let me tell you what exactly what verse. Let's take a look. What they did is that the disciples walked no more with him. Um, John chapter 6. Mm. For, as a matter of fact, let's read it down. John chapter 6. Let's read down to verse from 62, and we're going to read down to verse 66. So this is what happens with offense in the word. Brothers and sisters, stand on the word. Don't stand on your opinion. Don't stand on your imagination. Don't stand on the vanity of the mind. Don't stand on the flesh. Don't stand in heresy. Stand in the word. Because when you're sanctified, you're sanctified to the word. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And when you're, when you're speaking to somebody, you're supposed to be submitting to the process of the sanctification where you're only submitting to the word of truth, the gospel of salvation, not to your own opinion. Amen. Meaning you, a brother, you love you a brother or a sister that you are in, you are in love with the gospel. You are in love with the word. You're not a lover of yourself more than a lover of God. Because some people, they love themselves and how they feel of what they think the scripture mean than more than what Jesus said it means. The scribes, the Pharisees, the Essenes, what happened? They were more in love with their doctrine than what Jesus said it means. We have to love the master, the master's ways, his teaching, because look, in loving his teaching, you pick up his, you gain his personality. Amen. 
In love is his teaching, right? You get you partake of the divine nature. In loving his teaching, you're dealing with the sanctification. In loving his teaching, you end up growing up unto him in all things. But some people look, they began to murmur. So that he said certain things and he, in themselves, they rejected it. He said certain things of truth and in himself, look, Pope and Paul, I'm, I'm, I, I, I wanted to go here, but we're going to have to stop, right? And Paul said in the book of Galatians, am I become thine enemy because I tell thee the truth? To become mm -hmm. thine enemy, he went from one state in them to another state. The relationship changed over this word. Right. Am I become thine enemy because I tell thee the truth? He told them the truth and the Galatians was treating him like an enemy because they had the wrong persuasion. And that's how it is in the gospel. People become your enemy if you will stand for the truth. Brother and sister, no matter what, stand for the truth because only, only Christ can reward you. I, I can't reward you. Beloved can't reward you. None of us can't reward no. you. You have to stand for the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. That's how you stand because... Of the Lord, we shall receive the reward of the inheritance. That's what it says in the book of Colossians. So how are you going to be rewarded for being faithful if you're not standing in his word? You can't get caught up in a cult. You can't get caught up in a cult of yourself and try to make people cult worshipers of you and your feelings. You can't be there. No, you can't. You have to stand for the gospel of Christ. And when the Lord spoke about his greatness, some people were what offended. If you tell brother and sister, you can't say that in the gospel. Because the king didn't say that. His majesty didn't say that. They become offended. Mm. That's not what the Lord said, brother. They become offended. They don't reason. They don't discuss it. They become offended because, look, the word does not have that type of treasure or glory in them. That's why they're offended. That's why Jesus knew that they murmured in themselves. He said, do if this offend you. Mm. Now look, now Christ going to step to them. Because they thought they, thought they were going to humiliate Christ, right? In Capernaum. Right. Like, man, we no. stand in here with all these spiritually deep people. And you talking about eat your flesh and drink your blood. We find that to be embarrassing. So look what the Lord going to do. What and if John chapter 6 verses 62 to 71. What and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. Mm -hmm. And he said, therefore said I unto you mm -hmm. that no man can come unto me except they were given unto him of my father. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Look what he's going to explain right here. Saints, take a look at this. The Lord is showing something here. They thought they were leaving Christ. But the Lord already knew you were just hanging around. Mm. They thought they were leaving him. But he's going to clear something up. Then he said, therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it was given unto him of my father. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Because it has to be given to you of the father. So you have to be in relationship with the father in order to be in faith with the son. You have to be in relationship with the father to be in faith with the son. Because the father is the one that draws you to the son. Amen. So you have to be in love with the Father in order to come into the love and the faith of the doctrine of the Son. From that time, many of the disciples went back and walk no more. They disassociated themselves with him. So, brothers and sisters, if you're going to be steadfast in this gospel, then what's going to happen to people? You're going to see who's drawn by the Father and who's not. Who's hanging around because the gospel is trending. See, the gang world ain't trending no more. The bloods ain't trending. No, the crypts ain't trending. Hulam is ain't, Hulam's ain't trending. The rap world ain't trending. Ain't nothing trending right now but Jesus, but the gospel, but faith. That's the only thing that's trending. I mean, if you ain't righteous, everybody know you ain't nothing. Amen. Meaning this, if you can't be trusted, then people got to avoid you now. 
That's right. If you can't be trusted, we don't want you around our families. We don't want you around our children. No, we scared. Of, we don't want you to hurt our loved ones. No, so therefore, everybody's setting up their boundaries and their borders. People have been hurt too much. So some people that are vicious and they're mean, the wolves are putting on sheep's clothing, right? Because they still need to devour, devour sheep. Mm. So they're pretending to be believers, right? But they don't have the character. They don't have the nature. But here's the thing. Christ was showing them carefully. What and if you shall see the Son of Man offend up, ascend where he was before? Look what he's going to explain here. It's the spirit that quick... They were trying to understand Christ's words without being right. quickened by the Spirit. Yeah. They thought they could just listen and I got it. No. He said, it is the Spirit that quickeneth the flesh, meaning your mental cognition ain't going to profit you nothing. You cannot believe it from there. That's why Paul said the natural man cannot receive or perceive the things of the Spirit, meaning you naturally not going to be able to see this. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So what were they rejecting? They were rejecting what spirit? Wow. They were rejecting life. So they rejected spirit and they rejected life. They thought they were just rejecting doctrine. No, Christ's doctrine is a spirit and the life of holiness and truth and love and the divine reality. Brother and sister, may you be compelled to, to accept Christ's spirit and his life and his love for look, because it's for your profit. Amen. I just want to read this here. Sanctification. It's, it's not only a separation from what is sinful, but it's also a separation unto the reflection of the image of God. Sanctification is God's work of grace to bring man into perfection. It begins when you it begins when a man becomes a believer. Mm. When you repent and believe the gospel, the sanctification process begins, and it's a progressive process that continues until your death. It is progressively happening and developing in stages, proceeding step by step, continuously. It's a growing up unto him in all things, where you're being inculcated, where you're being deep read, where everything that's raw and, and, and coarse is being effaced and being taken away from you. Let's take a look at this here. Man is being washed and man is constantly being refashioned until what? Until the end of his mortality. Sanctification brings man into Christ's presence. Unless man does despite to the spirit of grace. Remember it says, they counted the blood of the covenant where if they were sanctified an unholy thing. Everybody's right. sanctified to the gospel. We're called to receive the character of Christ. Amen. The, what? To be elevated in character. That's what you're called to. Some people call it an unholy thing. Man, they say we got to stay the way we are until Christ come. No, you have to be a new creature right now. Were you That's without right. spot or without wrinkle or any such thing? Sanctification is the new birth process. It's the born again process. When man receives the seed of the word, he believes it. And the conception of that word begins inside of him. Christ begins to form in him. His sanctification has begun. Now he stands in the faith of the gospel and the new covenant. And he stands in the teachings of the word of the gospel of Christ. He can see his inner defilement and he renounces self-centeredness. And he embraces with love and he's persuaded, as it says in Hebrews chapter 12, of the promises of God. And he's constant. He's constantly being reminded of God's provision where the spirit will help his infirmities unto the day of perfection. It says the days of the Lord are as a shining light, shining more and more unto the perfect day until he experiences full wow. deliverance from the bondage of corruption. Well, look, while he's in the mortality, he's fighting from living. He's fighting against living in vices. Inner defilement is revealed and a humble man places himself before the throne of God when he sees what? The light of the gospel. The consciousness of your own inner defilement modifies your pride and takes you out of all conceit. And forces you as a child to be dependent upon the spirit of your father in heaven will you cry, Abba, Father, as it's written in Romans chapter 8 and Galatians chapter 4. Sure. And when man does that, then he's of a broken and a contrite spirit. You go before God, presenting your body as a living sacrifice, where you are progressively refashioned. And you desire that you would be made in the image of Christ. And that is what? That's your daily work. When you're loved, you're sanctified because the Lord got to clean wow. you up. The Lord said, now you are clean through the word I've spoken unto you. It's to clean you up. So once, what, how does the word make you clean? Because the word is creating in you. Amen. The word created the heaven and the earth. Now, if you receive the word, then there's a creation going on inside of you. 
If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. I mean, if he received that creative word, then he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So don't Amen. let the gospel, as you grow in the gospel, look, do not let your flesh have dominion over you. Don't murmur against the word. And brothers and sisters, I'm going to say this plainly. The Lord sent people in the earth to help you in your faith. It's up to everybody whether you take the help. That's it. The Lord came into the earth. Some people, he, they rejected him. The Lord said, if you go into a house and the son of peace be there, then let your peace, let your peace remain. So if you speak to somebody, brothers and sisters, and they don't receive that peace, that you're not coming to them in hostility, you're not coming to them in enmity, you're not coming to them seeking, seeking nothing from there. If you're coming to them in love to share the gospel, the wealth of the kingdom, if they reject it right, then you got to shake the dust. Amen. Because you have nothing to do with what, you, mean, you have nothing to do with what? Their disobedience. Love is about cleansing. Love is about making us perfect. Love is about nurturing. And the Father did not leave us to live rabid lives in this earth. He called us to what? To live in an excellent spirit. And to approve the right. things that are excellent. And that he that began a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. Let the performance of the love that sanctifies continue in you. And brothers and sisters, don't be offended in Christ. It's going the Father's way. And anytime we make it our way, then we're going to become offended. Like That's my sister right. said, you're just a messenger. So if you tear up the paper like the king of Israel did, and you tore you up, you tore up the spirit. You're responding to a spirit. You're not responding to a man. See, if you're if you're hearing man's word, then you can tear up man's word because man's word don't have no power. But if you're hearing the word of the gospel of Christ, if you're hearing truth, if you're hearing sanctification, if you're hearing renewing, if you're hearing um, washing, if you're hearing regeneration, if you're hearing love, if you're hearing kindness, if you're hearing compassion, uh -huh. if you're hearing repentance, if you're hearing the principles of the doctrine of Christ, if you tear that up, right, that is on you. You don't want to be there. If you're rejecting love, then that's on you. You have the right, right to do that. It's not becoming of you. It's not going to profit you. It's not going to help you. And many right. people do that. Why? Because they have not come into a deep study of the transgressions of the nation of Israel that, that happened in this Bible and the transgressions of the nation. They were stiff-necked. They were stubborn. They maintained their feelings. And although the scripture corrected them right, they still sacrificed in the gardens. How did Isaiah 65 oh. tell, you, tell us this carefully, brothers and sisters? Inspiring, can you post it? Isaiah 65, verse 1 to 3. How did Isaiah 65 say that Israel sacrificed in the gardens, but they were in the land. That's how bold they were in their sins. They didn't care what the scriptures said. Their God was their belly, as Paul said in the book of Philippians. How they yes. felt was their inspiration. They were operating, my sisters, at free will. They were operating in that same Alistair Crowley spirit, do what thou wills. As it says in Ezekiel 30, they followed their own spirit. As a matter of fact, let me read this. Ezekiel love sanctifies uh, um, Ezekiel 13. Love sanctifies us. Look at our errors. Look at the errors of the holy people. Look at the errors of man when they face with the word. Take a look at this. Ezekiel 13. Beloved, just gonna read from 1 to verse 9. Just read it. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, mm -hmm. prophesy against the prophets of Israel that prophesy. Mm -hmm. And say thou unto them that prophesy prophecy out of their own hearts. Hear ye the word of the Lord. They that and say unto them that prophesy out of their own heart. They're prophesying out of their own desires. Right. Look at how they became idols themselves. Hold on. They became false Christ. Mm. They're prophesying out of their own hearts. Now, now they're being corrected. In what in Babylon? Go ahead. Thus saith the Lord God, Woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. And this is where they're being caught at. This was a seduction, a strong delusion. They were following their own spirit and people were following them. They were following their own spirit and people thought they were following the spirit of the Lord. And the Lord had Ezekiel tell them, you're following your own spirit. You ain't seen nothing. 
So they were impersonating people that were spiritual. They were impersonating guides. They were impersonating teachers, but they didn't see what? Nothing. Did you see love? Did you see good manners? Did you see charity? Did you see sound doctrine? Did you see holiness? Did you see sanctification? Did you see true repentance? Did you see humility? Did you see that? Did you see baptism? Did you see perfection? Did you see the pride that you had to come out of? Did you see gentleness? Did you see how you're supposed to reconcile matters? Oh, you didn't see that? Then you didn't see nothing. Did you see your ego got to get out of here? Because right. the higher you, I'm gonna say this, but then says that the bigger your ego is in the gospel, the more you're gonna be crushed. The more opinionated you are when you come into the gospel of Christ, the harder your fall gonna be. You're gonna be grinded to powder. Mm. Because you have too much of an exalted sense of yourself. Right. So it's gonna hurt your feelings. Because you're feeling, well, you're feeling yourself, you're feeling yourself. You're feeling yourself, you're feeling yourself. That's what you're doing. Acts chapter 17 said we should feel after God. You should feel after God and find him. But two people are too busy feeling themselves and having other people feel them. But then said that we should feel after God and find him so we can get a response from the Father. Love sanctifies because the people are met in a filthy state. In spite of that, I, didn't, I still need 2 Corinthians 7 verse 1. Beloved, let's read this, please. They they following what? Their own spirit. So brothers and sisters, try the spirit, by the spirit, whether it be of God. Because people are talking on the internet. They're talking on Facebook, but they're following their own spirit. Mm. Look at that guy, Marcus, that was prophesying with us. And all these prophets and evangelicals that were telling you Trump was going to be president. And they, they prophesied that the Holy Ghost told them. The Holy Ghost told them. Then the trial came. And Trump was not president. And most of them said they staked their ministry on it. And if I'm wrong, then I'm going to stop teaching. And I'm going to take quit. And they didn't quit. Because they're a hypocrite even to their own word. Not only God's word. Not, not only they don't keep God's word, they don't even keep their own word. Mm. They made people to trust in their word. And when their word fell, when they came out, they were false prophets. Meaning what? You misled people because you didn't see nothing. And a lot of people were scared to tell them they were false prophets. They were scared. You don't have to be scared to tell somebody they're a false prophet. The evidence shows they're a false prophet. That's it. It's their evidence that shows that. That they're a false prophet or a false teacher or they lied in the name of the Lord. It is not subject to private interpretation. Period. No. Period. Amen. Woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit and they didn't see what? They didn't see nothing. Nothing. Go ahead. Oh, Israel. Thy prophets are like the foxes in the deserts. They're garlic. They're like guile. They're, they're cunning. They're tricky. They're elusive. Go ahead. <laughs> you have not gone up into the gaps. Now they made up the hedge for the house of Israel to stand in the battle in the day of the Lord. Brother and sister, they're trying to say that they're prophets. They're trying to say that they see. They're trying to say that they're teachers. But did they go in the, into the gaps? Did they see where the problem is? Hmm. Did they see what the problem is, brother and sister, for you to stand in the gospel, for you, if you're going to deal with the blessings of the Lord, you got to be obedient. If, if the curses are tied to disobedience, so the blessings are tied to obedience, to being spiritually minded, to deal with humbleness of mind, to walking in the fruits of the spirit, to the divine nature, to taking Christ's yoke and learning of him. The curses are tied to being opinionated. The curses are tied to your imaginations. The curses are tied to following your own spirit, to being carnally minded, to walking in the natural man, to walking in a reprobate state, to holding the truth and operating in what? In unrighteousness and to despise people that are good. That's what the curses are tied to that. To being, for, to being contentious and argumentative and not obeying the truth. They call, them, they call themselves false prophets. <laughs> yeah, because that's what they are. Go ahead, please. They have seen vanity and lying divination, saying the Lord saith, and the Lord have not sent them. Are we looking at what the scripture says? They said they saw the Lord saith, and the Lord did not send them because they didn't even know. But the beloved, the computer was hacked. Mm. Like some people are losing, they're losing their bank accounts because they thought they were talking to Bank of America, but they were talking to somebody in another country. Yep. Meaning you didn't, even know, 
you, they were giving up all the information. You didn't know you wasn't talking to, it was not an authentic call. So they thought they were on an authentic call, right? And they were emptied right. out. They were giving a wrong communication. Hear what it says. You have not mm. gone into the gaps, neither made up the hedge for the house of Israel to stand in the day of battle. Because if you, uh, the prophet's supposed to go up into the gap. Where's the problem? How are the demons sifting the people? The people are not walking by faith. The people are not being sanctified. The people are not obeying the word. The people are not being transformed. The people are operating. They're walking in the lust of the flesh, right? And if you walk in the lust of the flesh, you're giving place to the devil. And the devil going to look. He is going to run a rough shot. He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. You got to resist him. It's the trial. Yes, he does. They have seen vanity and lying divination, saying the Lord saith, and the Lord hath not sent them. So if you speak against the word, the Lord ain't send you. That's it. This is the standard that we all have. The Lord didn't send you to say that. And they have made others to hope that they would confirm the word. And they want you to support them. When they're following their own spirit. What I spoke to, I, the spirit told me, where's the scripture, brother? Amen. Or oh, if the spirit told you and it don't come to pass, then you lied. Everybody abandoned ship. Let's read. Verse 7. Have ye not seen a vain vision? And have ye not spoken a lying divination? Whereas ye say, the Lord saith it, albeit I have not spoken. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because ye have spoken vanity and seen lies. Therefore, behold, I am against you, saith the Lord God. And mine hand shall be upon the prophets that see vanity and that divine lies. But it says, it's not saying that they're not, the spirit is not showing. It said they're divining lies. But where did they divine these lies from? They were in fellowship with devils, Israelites. Mm. They were divining lies. They were not just making it up. There were spirit, spirits coming to them, making them think they had revelation. But from who? Wow. That's how Paul said, who have bewitched you that you should not obey the truth. This persuasion come up not from him that call of you. Yeah, you divining, but from who? You divining a lie. You got a revelation, but who did it come from? Mm. Which means you need to have spiritual intelligence. You need intelligence. You need to have discernment. Where did this message come from? Absolutely. Let's read. Mm. And mine hand shall be upon the prophets that see vanity and that divine lies. They shall not be in the assembly of my people. Neither shall they be written in the writing of the house of Israel. Neither shall they enter into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord God. Okay, so brothers and sisters, who want to stand here? Who's bold enough to stand there? Not that me. the Lord said you shall not enter into the congregation. It's, what it says, they shall not be in the assembly of my people, neither shall they be written in the writing of the house of Israel, neither shall they enter into the land of Israel. Are you hearing that? Uh. So why pretend? And that pretending can cost you all. Why impersonate revelation, insight? intuition spiritual gifts and that impersonation can cause you where you're not going to wear Hear what it says you shall not be in the assembly of the people neither shall you be written in the writing of the house of israel neither shall they enter into the land of israel it can cause you all by what professing yourself to be wise and you ain't seen nothing mm. let the process that christ began in the people the love of god sanctifies the people the Lord said in Ezekiel, when I saw thee, the time was a time of love, and I washed you. Inspire, if you're going to post that verse, and you can have it for your notes. He said, I washed you, because love sanctifies. It sets you apart for divine use, and then what does love does? It educates you. It inspires you, because it shares with you the operating system, the operating spirit. It gives you, love gives you wisdom, because wisdom is a loving spirit. And if somebody, Amen. if you love somebody, you have to make sure that they are intelligent. You have to share the best of you. I mean, God is sharing his whole heart, his whole soul, his whole mind with us. So if to love the Lord, we have to accept his mind. That's why I said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ. We have to accept the teacher and the master's mind if we're going to walk with the master. Amen. Brother beloved, verse 1, we can rest. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, 
perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Brother and sister, if we're perfecting holiness in the fear of God, God calls us to sanctify ourselves. As a gospel is a as a gospel is a general call. It goes forth oh. to all mankind like a sheet of lightning. Mm. Because God is dealing with his divine purpose like a flash into your consciousness and your mind to effectively call you out of darkness into his marvelous light. The, the spiritual dilemma can be seen here, whether we, hold on, whether man hears the gospel or rejects it. Whether man sees that he has to change or he can remain the way he is, it's up to them. How do they see? Amen. Blessed are your eyes that see and your ears that hear. For many prophets and righteous men have desired to see the things which you see and to hear the things you hear and have not heard them because it's plainer since Christ has come into this world that he may sanctify it and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. So what does it do? Love sanctifies you. Love cleanses you. Oh, it's fine, but you need to put that. You need to put the um, 5 verse, Ephesians 5. Yeah, you got to put that in Ephesians 5. You, got, you need to put it from, um, let me see, from, yeah, 20, from 25. You need from 25. Where it says, husbands, love your wives. Because what it's showing you, love sanctifies. Love sets you apart for divine use. Love also what inspires you. Love makes you more intelligent. Love makes you brilliant. Love Amen. enlightens you. Love makes you understand all the problems that are involved so you can go up into the gap. I Meaning, what happened to the children? Don't beat them like that. What's going, what's really going on? Mm. Oh, the motion of sins which were by the law did work in his members to bring forth fruit unto death, meaning Satan already programmed a propensity to when God speaks, man responds a certain way. So therefore, the Lord gonna condemn sin in the flesh and man gonna walk in the spirit and not for the lust of the flesh. We gonna give them what? A updated program, a better covenant, established upon better promises. Christ gonna dwell in the hearts of the people now. Amen. Husbands love your wives. Even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Here it is. It's going to show you what love does. Here it is. It's showing you what love does here. Go ahead, please, brother beloved. Husbands, love your wives. Mm -hmm. Even as Christ also loved the church mm -hmm. and gave himself for it. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. That he might present it to himself a glorious church. Not having a spot or wrinkle mm -hmm. or any such thing but that it should be holy and without blemish. So, brother beloved, but if you're in yes. a relationship, right, the wife right. might think you're being picky. You're being picky. Mm. Just get off of me. Leave me alone. This is all annoying. <laughs> this is fault finding. But the Lord is showing you his church has to be not having spot or wrinkle or any such things. But that it should be holy, it should be what? Holy meaning what? It, it's above what's immoral, above what's decadent, and without blemish, meaning what? You're operating according to the standard to that excellence. Because Amen. what the Lord is showing us, that love is an excellent relationship. It deals with excellent words and excellent actions. So therefore, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. So what the Lord is showing you, because love is excellent. Amen. So be excellent. And treat other people excellent and listen right. and improve grow in grace increase towards what unto the perfect day unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of christ because love look it washes you and cleanses you by the word so it corrects your mind absolutely it corrects misinformation it corrects the way we feel and gives us right feelings and takes us what out of the offense we don't have to be offended in christ let us understand christ let's not be tripped up Hold on, let's not be enticed to sin. Don't apostate. And look, don't mm. scandalize the gospel. And don't no. scandalize the servants. Why? Because do not, don't use an ad hominem to, to mask or put up a smoke screen for your disagreement with the word. Mm. When they crucified the Lord Jesus Christ, they really crucified, they hated the word. That's why they did that to him. Because that was right. heinous, that was criminal, that was evil, that was mean, that was torturous. I Meaning, listen, instead of being corrected, we're going to watch you suffer. That's what we'll do. That's barbaric. And that's barbaric. Wicked, hateful, envious. Mm. 
So, we were sometimes darkness, now we're light in the Lord. Brothers and sisters, walk as children of the light. Amen. Be inspired, be blessed, be loved, be sanctified, be justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. That's where it's at. Because the sanctification, Christ is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. And that is what I'm going to quote this. 1 Corinthians 1. Verse 30, but of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who is who of God is made unto us. He is the wisdom. He's the soundness of actions and decisions. Him, he's the wisdom and sanctification and redemption. That as according as is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord, that the Lord is doing it. Brothers and sisters, do not speak against the word. Amen. If you speak against the word, it's showing you that you're offended. Mm. Don't murmur. Ask the Lord to help you. So Lord, I don't want to feel this way. I feel I, I, I feel annoyed, but I shouldn't be annoyed because this is righteousness. Ask the Lord to give you a humble spirit that if somebody passes you or share a word with you that you're never offended, don't be there. Why? Because that's what? That's the carnal mind. That's a disaster. That's a trap. To being offended, yeah. you're trapped. Go ahead, beloved. I was going to say, being the love. Being the love. The love that Christ set before us, being the love. Amen. Because love is a supplicating spirit, right? Right. I, and let me say, beloved said that. I, you know what, beloved, you need to rest with that. You can do the closing. Here's the thing about love, right? If you're in a loving spirit, you're always Amen. listening. Amen. You, what'd you say, babe? Babe, what you said? Oh, okay. L love is always listening. That's why right. today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart, because love is always listening. Mm. Love Amen. is listening. Lord, I'm listening. Lord, I'm listening. I'm listening. Lord, I'm listening. <laughs> Men That's must always truth. pray and not to faint. Men must always pray and not to faint, because those that love the Lord Jesus Christ are always listening for the shepherd's guidance. They're not caught up in their self-deceit or their self-imagination, because they know the fall that people fall in, they fall in themselves. Mm. It ain't somebody else that make you fall. You fall in yourself. If they lie to you, right? Why don't you check it? You have the right to try the spirit, by the spirit, whether it be of God. And you can, you can hold on. You can question anybody because brothers and sisters, it's not that you're debating. Let's reason together. Like we always ask you, if you don't want to do it on the live, send us an email or call us. Let's right. reason together, right? Because everybody that's in the gospel is supposed to deal with the wisdom. They're supposed to be easy to be entreated because the wisdom that descended from above is first pure, peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated. See this? Without partiality, without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness are sown in peace in them that make peace. The wisdom that's from above, you can talk with it. You can mm. reason with it. It ain't partial. It don't have no respect of persons because the wisdom that's from above is only bearing witness of the Father's word. It ain't fancy. Look, hold on. It's showing the faith. Brother Beloved, please. God, mm. beloved? No, Amen. Beloved. So we want to hear yes. from you and then you say the prayer and we're going to rest right there. <laughs> Amen. It's the word. Like what you just said, brother, that's so beautiful, man, because it, it speaks to you because it's the word. Mm -hmm. It's there to speak to you. It's there to encourage you. It's there to guide you. It's there to lead you. It's there to cover you. It's there to empower you, to embrace you, to strengthen you in weakness. It's there to wash you. It's there to sanctify you. And it's there to justify you. So live in that truth, live in that glory, live in that righteousness, and stay on that path. That's the path full of fatness. And the Lord, the Lord has everything. Your heart's desire. If you obey him, obey his will, and walk in that love. That's it. Grace and peace to the saints. Mm -hmm. Amen. We need the prayer, brother beloved. Absolutely. They don't, don't, we, we, we don't leave without the prayer. Come on. Oh, no, no. Come you're on, right. You're right. You're right. Yep. Stay obedient. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm. Hold, Heavenly beloved, Father. hold yes. the tradition. Hold the traditions. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Go ahead. Heavenly Father, mm. thank you for giving us the heart and the courage to bear witness 
to the testimony of the gospel. Thank you, Lord, for the guiding us in all truth. Thank you, Lord, for covering us all with the blood of the Lamb. Thank you, Lord, for the fellowship of the saints. Thank you for forgiving us of our sins and this precious newborn babes being reborn and transformed into the vessels of love and honor, according, Lord, to your divine purpose. Thank you, Lord, for finding us fit for your use, for not allowing us to lean on our own understanding, but standing on your every word. In these things, Father, we thank you for the washing, for the sanctification, and for the justification. In the name of our mighty Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen and amen. Amen. Brother Beloved, that's beautiful. Because in the sanctification, there's justification. When you're sanctified, you're declared righteous. So if the Lord declare you righteous, are, are you going to make your life call God a liar? Mm. If the Lord, whom the Lord sent, whom the Lord called, he also justified. Whom he justified, he also glorified. If the Lord justified you, that means he declared you righteous. Can are you are you gonna live your life where your life calls what the Father and Jesus Christ declared about you that you are righteous to be a lie? You cannot do that. No, you can't. That's true. If he justified you, therefore you have to live the justified life. Amen. Brother Bloody, we got to deal with that next. We got to deal with the justified life. Amen. There's a justified life you got to live. You got to live the justified life. If he called you righteous, hold on. He called the things which be not as though they were. So let the justified life be formed in you. Live the justified life. Mm. Amen. You justified? So live it then. You've been exonerated? So live the exonerated life. You've been cleansed? So live clean. You've been called holy, so live holy. Amen. Live free. Live free. Live Christ. Live right. Brother Beloved, inspiring faith. Yes. Maccabus, Philemon, um, Amariah, Judah Gad, Caleb, Rachel, our families, all the saints, Trace, Brother Sister Tracy, Brother Cedric, Brother Stephan, grace and peace. Brother Yasun, grace and peace. All the saints, Sister Maruga, all the saints on the line, Every one of you, let me get in here. One moment. Mm -hmm. Every one of you, brother Richard, great, brother Richard, I need you to email us. Brother, e brother Richard, e email us, okay? Um, I like to know because sometimes we're traveling, we don't want to come to your town and not look you up, okay? Um, and all the saints be encouraged. Absolutely. I've, what we found, the biggest conflict in the Bible. Is man putting up their feelings above the word and people confirming their feelings, confirming their spirit instead of confirming the spirit of Christ. That's where the conflict is because there ain't no conflict because it's plain. That's right. It's plain. It's about nobility. It's about love. It's about righteous. It's about honesty. It's about sincerity. It's about justice. It's about truth. It's about righteousness. It's about the love of the father and the love of Christ first. And then our response to that is to love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind. That is called the agapeo. That's when you're responding to his love in being what? Committed, in being devoted, in being faithful, in being loyal, in being That's steadfast, right. in enduring. And then the band of the people that have embraced that high calling, they operate in the filial. They op operate in the natural affection, the warm sentiment, those deep feelings, the true friendship, because they see the fathers in true friendship. Jesus in is in true friendship. So they have love one to another. They are operating in true friendship and towards the brethren and the strangers. They are in the same spirit because they're an example of what conversion, sanctification and believing is mm -hmm. in a dark world they are the signs that christ is resurrected and living in them amen mm. salute to all the saints brother yanai all the saints brother cedric all you and brothers and sisters i need y'all i should pray use your access pray one for another the power of the lord is present to heal Pray the Lord increases his healing amongst people, that people come up with testimonies. Sanctify Amen. yourself so that your prayers will have more power. Because they work. Prayer works. The effectual, fervent 
prayer of the righteous, <laughs> the effectual fervent much. prayer of the righteous availeth much. So you want to be fervent, you want to be righteous because hold on, the prayer got more power. Amen. So God will hear you when you're not even righteous. How much more he will hear you when you are seeking to be righteous. When he call you righteous, he will hear your prayers. Oh, thou that hear his prayer. He heard Naaman's prayer. He was a Syrian. He didn't keep one Sabbath day, no, not a new moon, not a feast day. Hold on a minute. And the Lord heard his prayer because he had need. And when he heard his prayer, the Lord knew that he was going to be what? He was going to be what? An advocate of the true and living God, an advocate of the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. He was going to be an advocate of faith. He was going to be an advocate of truth. So the Lord heard his prayer, heard his prayer. So the Lord knows when he hears your prayers, he know what you're going to do. So you can hold up your prayers if you have something behind your back tuck. You can block your prayers. Be honest. Okay? Amen. The right one. The major key. Yeah, indeed, my sister. So grace and peace. Thought so you saying, Brother Veronica. Uh, um, sister, sister Veronica, you should email us too. Some of y'all, we yeah. he hear from y'all. We, we, we enjoy speaking with you. Some of you we've we spoken to before. Um... And we'd like to speak to y'all on a Zoom call just to salute everybody and just to talk to you. And if you want yeah. to talk to us privately at any time, we'll talk to you, right? If you want to talk right. to us and if you want it um, uh, classified, it will be classified, okay? <laughs> okay, y'all be blessed. Brother KB, grace and peace. All the saints, grace and peace. Y'all be grace blessed, right? Peace. Love sanctifies. And the problem is this. Satan says, let them be defiled. But the Lord said, let them be sanctified. Mm. Hate says, let them be defiled. But love says, let them be sanctified. We have to submit to what love said. Love said, you got to be sanctified. Dedicate them to divine use. Okay. Amen. All right. Grace and peace. Grace and peace. Oh, my sister, don't go. <laughs> go ahead. We listening. Go ahead. <laughs> What's up, Sister V? What's happening? I know they call you Sister V. Yo, Sister V, what's happening? Go ahead. You, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> My family, man. That's why Paul said, many as I have not right. seen face to face, it's going right. to be a joy one day to see y'all face to face. Right? <laughs> Even Sister Tracy laughing. <laughs> we in the joy of learning, right? Right. Right, because the Lord gave us another, he gave us a, another way to look at things. Where we see, where people see death, we see resurrection. Where, where we see, where other people see darkness, we see a time of light. Amen. Where other people see hopelessness, we see hope. That's what we see. That's where right. we see somebody blind, we see an opportunity for Christ to give them sight. Where we see somebody angry, we pray that the Lord comfort them. We see, we, we see somebody lost their way or they're disoriented. We pray that the Lord seek that which was lost. We see, see somebody lame or sick. We pray that they be healed. We see somebody poor. We pray that the Lord prosper them. Right. We see somebody empty. We're looking for them to be full. We, we see somebody down. We pray that the Lord lift them up. Mm. We see somebody having a rough day. We speak a kind word. We're part of the solution. We're not part of the problem anymore. We're part of providence because providence has met us. The, the, the preacher of righteousness has touched us, right? So we're part of right. the providence work. We're not part of the problem anymore. Sister That's Cheryl, right. amen, my sister. Sister Cheryl, amen, our sister. <laughs> right? Amen. Sister Cheryl, right. I, I ain't got to, I'm looking for your couple. You know we talk regular. Okay, good. All right. I'm going to leave it right there. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, let us be knit together in love because that's the formula that their hearts might be knit together in love unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding. Let our hearts be knit together in love because that's how the spiritual world responds to deep love. I'm going to say something. I have to see my, I have to see my, one of my, one of my, my cousins are moving to Atlanta and they demanded that I, that I come see them. They didn't want to hear it. But two, two of my female cousins called me and I was like, oh boy, y'all, okay, I'm going to show up. And when I showed up, right, right, they let me know I would have been in trouble if I didn't show up. They let me know I was under pressure. That's right. And it was so warm seeing them. It was so happy seeing them. You could feel the love in the Amen. room from the front to the back. That's the from day, the right? From the front to the back. Today, from the front to the back. Right. From the youngest 
that I ain't never right. seen. You, I'm gonna, you, know, you know something? I'm going to say this something too. If you love somebody and they have a child, right? Right. Sometimes you meet them and the child is three years old and the child has run up to you. Because sure. the, love, the love that was in the mother is in the child and the child never met you. <laughs> Amen. I'm like, who's this child right here? Who child, whose child is this? <laughs> now, right to me. I don't want to get in no trouble. Whose child is this? Well, that's mm. your cousin's child. That's so-and-so's child. Because it's love is such a beautiful, it's the what the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ did is so beautiful. If the love is in somebody, like as it was, I think it was in Lois and Eunice, and it ended up being ended ended in Timothy. That's ended right. up being in Timothy also. It's such wholesome, right? That it, listen, it's a to be loving is a legacy. Absolutely. It's a legacy spirit. It's Abraham's spirit was in Isaac and in Jacob. Being loving and honest and sincere and true is a legacy spirit. I've seen people I ain't, I ain't seen before that I don't know them. They, they showing me love. I'm trying to, I'm nervous that I don't even recognize them. Right? But it's right. the love of that person that's a, a young adult that their mom or their dad, I love them. So right. the, the love is, look, the love is hereditary. My sister said, when you, when you love people, people gravitate to you. Yes. People want to be safe. That's right. People want people that people want to be around people that they can trust that they don't have a listen. And they have a reputation that they don't do underhanded stuff. And that they love the, Listen, they love their mother. They love their father. They love their siblings. They love their children. They love their wife. People want to hear that kind of reputation. So let us be a sign of that in this world. For real. Amen. And that if something happens in their family that they known for seeking to reconcile, that's part of your legacy that you part of, you seek to reconcile and people know that about you and they'll ask you, how do I reconcile? That's you right. always try, you're trying to always fix it. Because love can fix it. Let's come back to the same values. Let's admit our wrongdoing. Let's be accountable, right? And listen, and just go forth and sin no more. Amen. So I felt the love. And you know what? In talking to y'all about it, I didn't realize until like right now, like what's going on? Because the love in the parent goes into the children. Yes, it does. Beloved know that. Beloved was is living it in does. Pittsburgh. And he was in New York. He, he, beloved was in New York, right? Right. And my youngest son was loving on him. They taking long walks on the sand and walking long on the street. <laughs> and I'm trying to figure out, like, how he know Beloved so deep? You know? <laughs> he, ain't, he ain't been in New York, what, maybe, like, maybe five times in the past seven years. Like, he know yeah. him so deep. It's a deep bond because... If you have that love in you, right, then your children gonna carry that love. That's right. That's what they, they they carry the love that's in you. So let's get rid of all the bitterness. Let our children carry the love. Let our children carry intelligence. Let our mm -hmm. children carry our discretion. Let them carry Amen. our discernment. Let them let them carry our prudence, the ability to govern and discipline ourselves by the use of reason. Let listen. Let's gain the spiritual wealth so we can pass it down to our children. Stay in the dominant spirit. Don't let the world lie to you. Yeah. Lo lo love is the dominant spirit. It ain't hate. It's not wickedness. That's that's for petty. That's that's pettiness. That's low base behavior. Mm. God created all things, correct? Amen. So that means love is a dominant factor. It's the dominant spirit. Go ahead. So walk into love. And love is justified of itself. Mm. Love is justified of his children. Amen. So walk in that love and be in that love, man. Embrace mm -hmm. one another and stay in that spirit. The spirit of love is, listen, man. It's true. But the love is a true listen, spirit. It ain't he, he, acting. He, he, it is mm, true. Go ahead. He had me choked up, man. He, even had, he had me choked the way going home. Just thinking about him. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, just being around the family, man, and, and I'm, I'm gonna tell you something, brothers and sisters. There's nothing. There's there's nothing more satisfactory than being around people that genuinely love you. 
I'm telling you, brother. There's nothing like it. I'm telling you. I, you know, I've experienced a lot of things in my life. Brother Cross, I've experienced a lot of things in his life. I'm saying we both can attest to that. Like there's nothing, there's nothing more, nothing more pure, nothing more sacred than being around people <laughs> that love you and love you the right way. They love you according to the will of the Father in Christ. <laughs> it's a different. I'm telling you, it's a different love. It's 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 empowering. And, you know what I'm saying? It's 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 like you got wings. It's like you're walking on air. It's like nothing can touch you. It, it cannot quickening? be defeated. It, is it it's quickening, quickening, beloved? It is absolutely. Quickening. It's quickening. But beloved, you said something. Yeah. Love is a sanct is the sanctifying spirit. Yes. You said love is sacred, right? Yes. See, once you enter into the love, it confirms you when you experience and you walk in the obedience of the love. Jesus said, "If you love me, keep my commandments." I Meaning, operate according to my authoritative order, mm. based governing your behavior. Now, if you walk in the love, you will see for yourself that it is the sacred spirit. Absolutely. If you walk in it, you'll be confirmed in yourself that God is love. And he that dwelleth in God, he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. If you will walk in it and you'll be sincere and you'll be tr pure and you'll be true, that lightning touch going to hit you, man. That tenderness going to hit you. You're going to see, look, the more, the more real you are, the more real you're going to see it is. Amen. The more real you are, the more real you're going to see it is. Right. What measure you meet, it says it shall be measured to you again, and you gonna have abundance. Amen. Be dis have discretion, have discernment, be circumspect. Mm -hmm. Be prudent. Praying always, but be loving. Why? Be a sign that Christ is resurrected in this earth and that he lives in you. You are the temple of God and the spirit of holy love. It, said, it don't say the spirit of God. It said the Holy Spirit dwells within you. That means you got to be true to it. And the more true you are to the word, it said truth shall return to them that practice in it. If you're true to it, then practice it. Oh, you see my sister said? I haven't uh, experienced you. Yeah, look, look. See? Look what my sister said. I haven't experienced true love being displayed until I met your family. When we met her, we love her. And meaning Amen. you can know when somebody loves you like that. It goes right through you like, Foom. meaning this, you feel like your system got rebooted. You can feel it. Like, whoa. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to tell you one thing. Absolutely. I'm going to tell you one thing, right? I went and saw some cousins that I haven't seen in maybe 30 years. Mm -hmm. And when I saw them, my older cousin, she was like maybe in her 70s. And the other one was like in her 40s. And she used to babysit me when I was young. But I ain't seen them like 30 something years. And right. when I met them, right? right? It brought a tear to my eye. The vibration I felt come off of them. I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, you still have people like this in this wicked world? It hit me that deep. Mm. I said, you still have people like this in this world? Brother and sister, let's be a sign that the Lord still have people like that, like love in this world. Where when they meet you, they're so touched, right? It makes them pray. Where you moving, where a person that haven't haven't said a prayer or a person that um that is not devout, but they'll say, you know, thank God for you. And they gotta catch themselves. Wow, I said, thank God, wow. A person didn't say God bless you, but they saying God bless you because of how you touch them, where it touched a spirit. Amen. I mean, I met my sister show, it was a deep touch. It's like, um, why are we finally meeting? We finally met, right? <laughs> it was that kind of link. Like, Amen. Wow. Like, like, like we have to get through the bushes and cut down bushes and, and, and trees and swim. We finally, finally met, man. That's how the meeting the same supposed to be. It's supposed to be that way. Why? Absolutely. Because the spirit of Christ in me salutes the spirit of Christ in you. That's how it's supposed to be. Amen.
The dignity in me salutes the dignity in you. The nobility in me salutes the, the nobility in you. The father in me salutes the father in you. That's where it's at. That's how it's supposed to be a salute. Because we all baptize into the same spirit. So we're supposed right. to salute the spirit inside of us. We're going to tell you grace and peace. <laughs> grace, and peace. <laughs> grace and peace. Grace Amen. and peace. Brother Stephen, grace and peace. Oh, and Brother Paul Ward, grace and peace. Y'all keep your prayers up for my right. people. Pray, pray one for another. Look, it tells you that ye may be healed. It ain't the past. It's a living word. Amen. Grace and peace. Grace and peace.